I'll be back. If, um, let me see if I can cross the street here. If I can get on the other side of the street, uh, I might get a, I might get another view again. Okay. All right. Oh yeah. Excuse me. It's um. It, it's still. It, they don't have any any control of the fire. That that fire is just roaring. Um, it still hasn't reached. Um, it hasn't reached the front of the building, which again I'm not sure if it's the front, but the two square towers uh, that face the, the sort of the the, um, the the front. What looks like the front where you wait in line to get through. Uh, they, it looks like the main entrance. Um, the fire has not reached there yet, but it has. Uh, it, it's really engulfed in there. The okay. images, Ken, I can it's hear whistles yelling. blowing behind yeah. you and the police. What's happening on the ground at this moment? Movement. Sorry about that. What's um, happening on the ground? It's getting quite loud where you are. They've got, uh, there's, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of police, uh, well-armed police uh, moving, moving us along. So Tell them what we have from the video. We so, need to get Yeah, if I can get to Wi-Fi, I think, well, you probably have all the video you need now, but I... Um, was, um, from from what I'm seeing, Ken, I would say this I can't I can barely see the spire. It's it's the, the base of it looks completely engulfed at this point. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah, no, the, it's, again, it's uh, what what I call the front of the building is the two square towers. If you're looking at the front of the, what I consider the front, where the three doors are, those square towers don't look like they've been touched actually by the fire yet. It's the uh, it's behind that, and then all the way back to the to the big, big, tall spire. Ken, that, that's fully engulfed. Stay with me, and please stay safe where you are on the scene, just 150 yards away. Amazing. Ken was inside the cathedral less than 30 minutes ago. I want to bring my NBC News colleague, Ann Thompson, in. Ann, this is considered one of the most extraordinary cathedrals on earth. Oh, it's religiously significant, Stephanie. It's it's architecturally significant. And to watch this fire is just heartbreaking. That spire that you see in the middle, um, a spokesperson for the cathedral tells the New York Times that that is where the fire started. The Paris City Hall tells our producer, Nancy Ng, that the fire broke out shortly before 7 o'clock. 12 million tourists a Seven year. 7 o'clock Paris, Paris time. time, correct. 12 million tourists a year go through this. It is the heart of Paris, if you've ever been there. It's on a little island called Ile de la Cité in the middle of the Seine, and it is absolute, it is a magnet for people, whether you're a believer or not. And for this to happen during Holy Week, the holiest week of the year in the Catholic Church is just heartbreaking. For architecture enthusiasts, not just Catholics, uh, but last year there was an urgent appeal from the Catholic Church to raise funds to save the cathedral. Well, it was crumbling, or it is crumbling. Well, and think about it. I mean, it's been around since the late 1100s. It was um, defaced during the French Revolution. It has a long history in this city. So it's not unusual here in New York. We had a campaign just a couple of years ago to restore St. Patrick's Cathedral. These cathedrals get a lot of use and pollution, as well as tourism takes its toll. But this is just extraordinary. And earlier, before this fire took off the way it did, you could see scaffolding in the same area where the fire is burning. So one of the big questions will be, did the renovations in some way spark this fire? Uh, President Trump has tweeted just a moment ago, I share it, quote, so horrible to watch this massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Perhaps flying water tankers could be used to put it out. Must act Quickly, um, earlier this year, just in March, um, another church in France, in Paris, caught fire. They were able to keep that under control, but again, major damage. Yeah, you can see, and, and it's hard, at least from what we've been able to see, it's hard to see if there are even any, if there's any fire equipment close to that area. Um, Notre Dame, as you know, it has that big plaza in front of it where those two towers that Ken spoke about, that is the north side of the cathedral, but this seems to be more in the center. Uh, 
um, not quite where those famous flying buttresses are on one end, but near the spire. And it's hard to tell at this point if they've been able to get any water on it in, in any way to sort of stop this fire from spreading. I mean, the sky is only getting darker. Now, I know we have very limited information, but officials in Paris are saying that the fire could be linked to those renovations that are going on right now. Is that correct? Sure. And that, well, I think that's, that would be the first place they'll look because, of course, any time there is construction or renovation going on in a building as old as this and you see this start, um, that would be the first place you would look. Right now, at the early route, we haven't heard anything about terrorism or arson or anything like that at this point. But again, it's early into this. The first, obviously, the first thing they have to do is get everybody out of there safely and stop this fire from spreading. Is this the busiest week of tourists they have here? I'm guessing Palm Sunday yesterday, yep. Easter less than a week away. Right. You have you have Palm Sunday yesterday. You have Holy Thursday, obviously, on Thursday, Good Friday, the day that Christ was crucified, um, and then Easter on Sunday. So this is an extraordinarily busy week for every Catholic church around the world, but particular for the Cathedral of Notre Dame. Look at that. Let's just take a minute. Look at this image. The cathedral engulfed in fire. And to your point, we have not yet seen any images. We know that there are firefighters in the building. Uh, my last guest said he could see uh, some water cannons from the ground being shot towards the structure, but nothing near the roof where it really seems yeah. the start of this is. That appears that the, the roof in this section, and you can see those famous flying buttresses there, the roof in that section of the cathedral is um, pretty well engulfed. And look at that, at the skyline of Paris in a way that we have not seen, I would argue, probably in, in, in decades. I can't remember the last time we saw that kind of smoke coming from the skyline of Paris. It is very, it's a very, very difficult sight. And the fire around that spire is just extraordinary. Just a reset for our audience, if you are just tuning in, that is the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris you are looking at right now, currently engulfed in flames. Uh, all tourists uh, were evacuated within the last hour. People are now being pushed back. Just a few minutes ago, people were just 100 yards away on the street, but the ash and debris falling from that ash uh, was getting on people. I spoke to a bystander just a few moments ago who said it felt like a hailstorm. Even in restaurants nearby, they, they were the, the debris was falling on those restaurants, leaving burn holes in the seats. So they have now pushed people back uh, who are standing on the street and in nearby restaurants. And I want you to stay with me. Let's bring in to join us Carolyn Margulies. She is new at the cathedral, and um, she can see a lot from where she's standing right now. Carolyn, walk us through exactly where you are and where you've been for the last hour since this broke out. Yeah, um, so I was walking with my friend, and we were just trying to go to a bookstore across the Seine, which is the big river that cuts across Paris. Um, for those of y'all who don't know, the location of Notre Dame is kind of on an island in the middle of the Seine. So my friend and I were walking, and we saw a bunch of flames, and we thought, oh, that looks like it's coming from near Notre Dame. And then we walked closer, and we saw that Notre Dame itself was on fire. Um, the fire seems to have originated from the back part of the church, which seems to be more the steeple. Um, right now, we are are in, in, we're across the Seine, closer to the Centre Pompidou in the area called the Marais. Um, so we're across the river, but we have a really clear shot of seeing the side. And the fire really seems to have worked its way forward. Um, it's just work. It's right now parts of the inside of the church are visible. It's destroyed most of the roof in the center. Um, and there are just people crowded around. And there's just a huge pillar of green smoke. How quickly did all of this happen? Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that, please? How quickly has this progressed? When did this all begin? I think we probably got here about 20 minutes ago was when we first saw it. It might have been half an hour when we first saw the flames. Um, when we first got there, it was it didn't seem to be that big. Like, the smoke was really big, but the flames seemed to be a lot smaller. And, yeah, they weren't that visible. And then we walked around close to the side, could see the flames, and it's really progressed pretty quickly. Um, yeah, it's working its way forward. We haven't really seen any. We've seen a couple firemen and fire trucks going towards the area, but we haven't seen any water. How far. far away are you at this? point 
Um, we are a couple blocks down. I think we're a good like seven minute walk away. Um, we're yeah, a good couple blocks away. Are the streets clear where you are? Have they been evacuated? Are they shut down? No, we're far enough away that we're across the river, so pretty much everything's still going on. And we're actually, there's a huge group of people, um, some of, like, I've just a lot of whom are crying and taking videos on their phone. A lot of cell reception is down, depending on what network you have. Um, so, no, but when we were closer to the area, there were a lot of parts that were shut down. And I think it seems like they've really been pushing people. Oh, my God, this people just fell inside the church. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It just, it, yeah, it just fully collapsed to the inside of the church. Carolyn, explain that to me again. You are looking at the okay, church. So on the church, there's the part that y'all, that people have probably seen before with the big um, rows in the middle and the two towers. And then there's the part of the church and there's a large steeple in the back. And that was where the fire seems to have originated or at the base of that. And that just fully caught into flames and collapsed into the inside of the church. My goodness, Ann Thompson still with me. Ann, these, these are live pictures at this moment. I mean, that, the, the, the spire is where the scaffolding already was. They were doing repairs there. So we know that the structure was compromised. How significant is that? Oh, it's, it, it's, a, it's just a phenomenal, it's a phenomenal loss. It's a phenomenal loss for the church, for Paris, for culture in, culture in general. I mean, this church has been, was, uh, Victor Hugo made it literally famous um, with the Hunchback of Notre Dame. For Catholics all over the world, it is a must see when you go uh, to Paris, the city of light, and for that spire to be consumed by flames and then apparently fall into the church itself. It's just one of those moments that absolutely just takes your breath away. It's I mean, the skyline compromised forever. Carolyn, give us an update of what you can see where you are. Um, it's, it's moving forward a lot faster. It's about to be at the part that most people see, like the front of the church. Like the fi after the um, after the steeple fell in, the flames seem to be a lot more yellow. They seem to be originating from the inside of the church as well as the top. Um, it's going to hit the front pretty soon, I think. Um, parts of the more of the roof, the roof is caving in. I mean, it's 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 really bad. It's really really bad. And it seems to only be getting worse. Carolyn, stay with me. I want to share a statement from the Paris mayor, Anne Hidalgo, just moments ago, urging the public to, quote, respect the security perimeter around the cathedral while emergency services tackle this terrible fire. Um, clearly, uh, this is a, uh, a, a cathedral, Anne mentioned it earlier, 12 million tourists a year. So this is a very crowded area. We know that everyone was evacuated, but in the last few minutes, they are pushing people even further and further from the perimeter. The mayor of Paris is urging people to respect that. French President Emmanuel Macron has confirmed that he has canceled plans for a televised speech uh, that he was going to be giving tonight in light of the fire that is going on and clearly not under control at this point. The situation only seems to be worsening. Carolyn, uh, moments ago you said you hadn't seen water yet. You saw a few firefighters. Has that situation changed? I mean, I know you are a good seven minute walk, but what can you see now on the ground? I mean, you can't, I still not from this end, you can't see any air, like anyone trying to stop anything. I imagine to be, I, yeah, it, you can't, I can't see any, it doesn't seem like they're doing anything. Um, the fire's just working its way down. I mean, I, it, yeah, it looks like part of the back of the structure that was holding the steeple up is about to collapse because that looks like it's made out of pretty, like, it looks like it's made out of wood, yeah. Um, so I don't see any, it, it doesn't look like it's improving to me. It looks like it's about to get much, much worse. Carolyn, this I don't is, know, though. Hi, Carolyn, this is Ann Thompson. Um, uh, have you seen any ambulances? Is there any indication that people have been injured in this fire? Was anybody taken out of the cathedral can you tell i mean there are ambulances passing by us right now and some uh uh some firefighters who are it's several pompiers so they're like firefighters and they seem to be also like uh emergency response folks they they're going forward i haven't seen anyone who's been injured my guess would be probably the most likely thing would be because of the smoke and the ash um the ash even my friend and i when we were standing pretty far away as you can see from the video we were being hit with ash it felt like it was 
falling on our face. Yeah, is, um, is, yeah. it so hard, is it hard to breathe in the area where you are? It was, it was pretty hard when we were standing downwind. Right now we're off to the side, but I imagine if you be downwind, if you were downwind, that you would not be having an easy time breathing. Yeah, the, the spire that's on fire is right over the altar in um, in the Notre Dame Cathedral, and the, so they thought it. The fire started just before seven. It's unclear if there was a mass going on at that time, or even if there were tourists inside. But that's obviously one thing that we we would hope to find out. But this is just these pictures are are unbelievable to look. At. This is an NBC News special report. Here's Lester Holt. Good day from New York. We're coming on the air with breaking news out of Paris, where a massive fire has erupted at the famed Notre Dame Cathedral, one of Europe's greatest landmarks. Video shared on social media show the roof engulfed in flames. That's the scene early evening right now uh, in Paris. Uh, this fire has been burning for at least an hour. Live picture there on the left side, you can see a close-up of one of the, the spire uh, fully en engulfed in flames. The flames appear to be concentrated on the back side of the famed cathedral. And one of the shots earlier revealed a number of uh, scaffolding put in place, construction scaffolding around the site where the flames appeared to break out. But at this hour, obviously too early to, 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 to name a cause. But different angles here, obviously, uh, people sharing images via social uh, media, that plume of smoke billowing away from that burning spire. There's a long shot across from the city of, of Paris, and you can see that fire is burning and putting a significant amount of smoke in the air. Of course, one of Europe's uh, most famous uh, tourist attractions. Let's go to NBC's Nancy Ang, uh, who is in Paris right now. Nancy, what can you tell us? Lester, the fire is ravaging throughout the Cathedral of Notre Dame, and we just learned from the firefighters on site that the spiral, which is 96 meters high, has collapsed. This is extremely tragic because the Notre Dame is is the most loved and the most visited um, monument in Paris. More visitors come here than the Eiffel Tower or visit the Arc de Triomphe. So watching this fire rage in the last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and w watching how it spreads is just taking everyone by surprise. Nancy, this is obviously, as I noted, one of the great tourist attractions of, of uh, Paris, if, if not all of Europe. Uh, would people have normally been inside at that point uh, of, of the day? Yes, I think a lot of visitors would still be in there just before the cathedral closes. As I said, this is the most visited, and most people uh, are here this week just before Easter coming up, and uh, all day long, visitors go in to see and visit um, the beautiful stained glass windows. And ironically, I was there just four days ago filming inside the cathedral, going way up into the rafters and speaking to the spokesperson and uh, one of the leaders of the churches who was telling us that the church has been under construction for the last few years. And the spiral the, the spiral, which has just collapsed, is one of the main pieces of construction that is going on. And so it seems that something went wrong. And uh, uh, I think that uh, everyone will be investigating how this fire broke out. Yeah, uh, Nancy, along with a lot of Americans, it's uh, certainly a place I have visited. How, however, I've never made the, the trip up to the top. It's uh, over 300, almost 400 steps that people take to go up to the top. Uh, is that uh, still open during the construction? Um, it's only up, open up to a certain point, but certainly up on the rooftop, it's been closed for the past year because there is massive construction, construction going on. And they've been fundraising and fundraising quite heavily in the United States. In fact, many of the donors to fix the, the rooftop of Notre Dame because the structure has been crumbling and uh, the rooftop is made out of wood. Outside, it looks very solid, but inside, it's been crumb crumbling, and even gargoyles have been dropping off the rooftop. So many donors have been contributing to to the construction, and so it has been closed for quite for for the last year. So the only people who would be up there would be workers. Yeah, and we see these pictures may be delayed a few moments, but now we see the the spire no longer. 
uh, in the picture there. And we did, as I did note, uh, there was construction scaffolding around the area where these flames first appeared to, to break out. Again, this has been burning for well over an hour. Uh, this is cell phone image that someone shot there. Uh, Notre Dame on an island there in, in the middle of Paris. And there is the scene uh, from uh, across the city. And all eyes now uh, on this, uh, this, this famed example of uh, French Gothic architecture. Uh, Chris Jansing is joining me here in the studio with a little more. Chris? Yeah, you can see the way the smoke is going out, and there have been all kinds of debris that's following, obviously, ash that is falling uh, from the sky. So that's why they extended uh, where people can go. They've moved people further and further away. Uh, having been there, you know, Lester, that very close by the cathedral, there are cafes and restaurants. One of the great places to go and sit and just watch the world go by are these cafes that are literally just across the street, just across the way from Notre Dame Cathedral. And so people were there and they described, as I've been trying to follow this on French media, on uh, Le Mans newspaper, uh, people were just feeling almost a rain shower of ash coming down. This is, as you point out, in the very center of Paris. So you'll be able to see it from much of that city. But even though at any time of year, I know the last couple of times I've gone to Notre Dame, I've noticed how much longer the lines have gotten to get in. So many more people uh, have been traveling to Europe and wanting to see this iconic cathedral. But this is Holy Week. Yesterday, obviously, uh, a, a very important day uh, with Palm Sunday, then there would have been uh, special services going on all week long on Holy Thursday, on Good Friday, and of course, a high mass that would be uh, taking place on Easter on Sunday. President Trump has tweeted about this, saying so horrible to watch the massive fire at Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. On the phone with me now is uh, Ken Leclerc. He is an American who is visiting uh, Paris, and he is uh, near the scene there. Uh, Ken, can you tell us what you're seeing and, and how close you are to Notre Dame? Right, that's right. Um, I would guess I'm about five to six hundred yards uh, off the front right corner, um, in, a, in a sort of a, a narrow street, but it's a perfect opening, sadly, to the to the side of the building, which uh, where it looks like the fire had started towards the back, and it basically has moved its way to the, the entire um, the, the between the, the two towers in the front and the spire in the back. The entire roof has collapsed in. There's no Sadly, there's no, there's nothing left in the middle, and the fire is just sadly making its way to the, the front towers. They do have water. Uh, there's a, a big bucket truck uh, that's shooting water on the front. It looks like they're trying to, you know, keep it from getting to the two front towers. Um, but they still got have uh, about 20 and 30 foot flames that are shooting out uh, from the what was the the beginning of the rooftop. Yeah, you've got a, a better vantage point than our cameras because what we have not seen is the efforts of firefighters who we know are definitely on the scene. So they're shooting from the outside of the church to the, toward the flames. Correct. I, I can't tell if there's, I, I can't imagine there's anyone in this building. I mean, it, it, there's too, it, 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 there's, there's just way too many flames for I would imagine them to be inside. But if you're looking from the, uh, the courtyard in the front, and so you see the two square towers at the front of the building. Sure. There's yep. a there's a bucket truck. There's a bucket truck right off the right corner uh, that's feeding water into the into the opening where the roof used to be, trying to keep the flame from making it to the front. This is uh, obviously an area, as, as my colleague noted a moment ago, an area where people enjoy the view from cafes and line uh, the, the riverfront there. Can, can you tell us what the scene is with just people on the streets? Do you get a sense that Paris is standing still right now? Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot, obviously a lot of people, plus they feel it's just back, so there's a lot more people in the, in the streets about, like I said, three, four hundred, five hundred yards away. Um, a lot of emotion is, uh, you know, like... Like us, we you know we're in the building a half hour, forty five minutes before, and then we're sitting in front of those cafes you were just talking about. Yeah, it is a it's a it's an awful picture to look at as we watch this uh, scene and, and various angles. Uh, none of them uh, none of them makes it any better. It's uh, it's this this famed yeah. uh, this famed piece of, of Europe of Paris. It's most uh, it's most popular attraction uh, now in flames here, and uh, as we saw in one of the shots. Uh, the famous spire there now has burned and collapsed. But if you look at this picture right now, note the scaffolding.
that uh, extends uh, up about four levels and then crosses over and then four levels back down. Uh, so obviously a site, of we noted, of, of construction. They've been doing a lot of restoration there. Um, the history of Notre Dame includes periods of, of destruction and rebuilding, and, and probably it goes without saying that whatever damage here will be rebuilt. But right now, uh, the city knocked back on its heels as they watch Notre Dame burn. Chris? One of the things that uh, is notable about Notre Dame and anyone who has walked around it is that that rear where it seems to have begun is arguably as beautiful as the front facade. Uh, and there are so many obviously interior priceless works of art. Uh, I can remember being back there, maybe it was the late 1990s, early 2000s, where they had just redone the famed uh, stained glass rose windows. So what we see from the outside is obviously horrifying. It's uh, one of the most beautiful and important places in all of Europe, but obviously priceless works of art inside as well, Lester. Yeah, one of my favorite places is, is near the back of, of the church, of the cathedral there, where that fire is burning, and there's a little park area and benches, and just an area to, when you've been on your feet all day visiting visiting France, uh, visiting Paris to, uh, to to rest and just take in the, the flying buttresses there, which it's known for, and just the, uh, the very tranquil scene around Notre Dame, and it's sad for all of us to watch it burn right now. I think we have that video now we can show you of the spire collapsing just a short while ago, and uh, I was monitoring uh, uh, a microphone from the area, and there was an audible groan from the crowd as that, uh, as that spire split in two and the top half uh, falling into the flames. There, the, the, even the live pictures right now seem to show uh, the fire, if only intensifying, even though firefighters uh, outside this picture are pouring water on it, but there must be a great deal of fuel uh, for it to continue to rage. And this has been going on for well over an hour, and I don't have the exact time it broke out, but it's been burning for well over an hour. Uh, Sarah Harmon uh, with NBC News is in our London Bureau, whether, where we are gathering resources and uh, monitoring uh, what's happening in, in Paris. Uh, Sarah, what can you add? Hi, Lester. Well, obviously, it's a huge gut punch for anyone who loves the city, who loves France, who loves art, to watch this 850-year-old building. One of the world's finest examples of Gothic architecture is burning before our eyes. We know Elysee Palace says that French President Emmanuel Macron is now on his way to the scene. French media is quoting officials from the French Fire Brigade claiming this fire could potentially be related to renovation efforts on this cathedral. Um, obviously, that's not confirmed. At this point, we don't have any reports of injuries, which is pretty incredible when you look at the scale of that blaze, Lester. All right, uh, Sarah Harmon, thank you. Let's go to Paris now to Nancy Ng, our NBC News producer uh, in Paris. You're, you're monitoring, obviously, French media there. Uh, are they making any progress on this fire? I th um, all the firefighters are at the scene, and we know that, that they're trying their very best, but it seems that the flames just continue to grow. And it doesn't seem that they have it under control yet. Uh, the mayor of uh, Paris just tweeted, and she said this was a horrible fire, that um, everyone was to stay outside of the perimeter to let the firefighters do their jobs. We know of no victims at the moment, no one injured, so that's a good sign. But it looks like the Notre Dame Cathedral is losing a lot of its beauty tonight because it, the damage looks so great. It's just so horrifying to watch. Yeah, Nancy Ng uh, in Paris, thank you. And uh, no matter what angle, uh, what camera angle we show you, uh, this picture only grows worse. And look at the crowds of people right now as that camera pulls out. I mean, everyone just stopping and watching, uh, no doubt with a shared sense of, of disbelief to watch this, uh, this amazing landmark uh, go up in flames. The fire had, um, had, had appeared to be burning primarily in the rear of the building, but it seems like so much of the roof now, and, and if you look off to the right there, there was more debris that just collapsed uh, in, a, in a cloud of smoke. Uh, but it seems to be engulfing much of the roof. We can only imagine what it looks like uh, inside, what sort of uh, damage has occurred there. This, uh, 
This cathedral, we noted, was built between the uh, 12th and 14th century and has had a, uh, an incredible history. There is uh, long lines of tourists that, that gather every day to, to climb up for the amazing views from the top. Uh, 387 steps, um, according to a website. Uh, the, the view up, up the top is, is one worth taking, one I haven't been able to take advantage of, but uh, it is a very popular attraction that brings long lines there. Henry VI was crowned there, Mary Stewart. You talk about the history. It is absolutely extraordinary. The towers go up 223 feet, and uh, the view inside and outside is absolutely breathtaking. Anyone who has ever been in knows when you walk inside and you look up and you see the grandeur of the place, it is truly unbelievable and of course uh also legendary because of uh quasimodo and victor hugo um he invented that hunchback the hunchback of notre dame so both in literature in real life and in the history of france and in europe this is a place that is unparalleled and the home church of the archdiocese of of paris uh, notre dame i want to go to uh hallie jackson right now at the white house hallie i noted a moment ago the president is making some remarks about this he did uh, via twitter lester the president tweeting it is so horrible to watch the massive fire at notre dame cathedral in paris he says perhaps flying water tankers could be used to put it out must act quickly should note that as this has gripped the world's attention it has also gripped the attention of the commander-in-chief we know that when he tweeted about this fire he was on air force one he has just just landed in Minnesota. He is there for a couple of events related to tax day and the tax law that was passed in his administration. But at this point, he has been sitting on the tarmac for probably 10 to 15 minutes. It's a bit of an unusual delay. The greeters who had been set to meet him on the ground have boarded Air Force One, have come aboard the plane. Again, not something we typically see. We cannot say definitively that the president is watching the coverage of this, of this fire at Notre Dame. But we know that he at some point had been watching that coverage, given the tweet. I asked a White House official what the president President may have meant by that phrase flying water tanker. Uh, likely that the president, I'm told, was referring to those sort of big planes, Lester, that you might see, for example, out at a forest fire in California or out west, dropping some kind of a retardant onto the flames. But this is clearly something that the president is watching closely. We are monitoring for reaction, not just from the White House, but from the various embassies, from the State Department as well. So far, we know the State Department is seeing this. They've tweeted about it, but we are looking for more information, as you can see the tweet there from the French president. Uh, Emmanuel Macron up on screen as well, Lester. All right, Hallie Jackson, thank you very much. Uh, that's just as that camera, you're looking at that view uh, uh, tilted away. We actually got our first glimpse of firefighters who were, uh, are on that, I don't know if that's a balcony or what that is area, um, but in, in a position to fight the flames now from, uh, uh, from the roof or near the roof itself. And uh, according uh, to the descriptions on the ground, they are uh, firing uh, water, streams of water from the ground as well. Um, the church is uh, 200, 226 feet, I'll double check that, um, tall. Um, not, would not be easy to get uh, for firefighters in a traditional way and given the soaring ceilings there. Uh, but but um, clearly there was construction going on and that will be the, the first area of investigation as to whether that could have uh, been part of what started this horrible fire. This is a place, Lester, where they have seen tragedy before. And in fact, when uh, Napoleon uh, was there in 1804, it was in such a state of disrepair. And there you hear the gasps, which every t I, I don't know how many times we'll see that and we'll still be gasping. Uh, but uh, it, it really wasn't until uh, around World War II that, that there was a major restoration that was done, a major restoration on the organ as well. In those circles, in musical circles, the organ inside there is absolutely legendary. Known for the bells. And, yeah, known yeah. for the bells as well, yeah. And, and you can also discuss, I think, the history of, uh, of Notre Dame without talking about uh, maybe the most famous story, uh, which is of Joan of Arc. And so whether it's Napoleon or Joan of Arc, or as we mentioned before, Henry VI, Mary Stuart, uh, this is a place where historians, 
art historians, as well as millions of tourists come every year because of the, the glorious nature of what is there and the history of what has happened there. And as if you had noted, though, there's, it's such a, there's so much history here, but it's also a place that people in, in that French tradition just want to take in the moment, the people watching and, and the cafes that, that line. It's a fantastic, it was a fantastic people watching, and, and they call this church as they, they, uh, Our Lady, uh, that is a sort of a Catholic uh, a way of, of saying this is the respect that they give to Notre Dame, obviously still used by the Catholic Church today for uh, Sunday Mass and, as you said, the seat of the Archbishop. Yeah, and the uh, Notre Dame actually sits on an, on an island. Um, I'm going to try and pronounce it. Uh, Ile de Saint -le -le Cité. Ile de Cité. Uh, all right, very good. So uh, City Island. Uh, yes, yeah, the island in the middle of the city. Is this is really the part of... Uh, of Paris that was first settled, right dead center of Paris. We want to go back to uh, Sarah Harmon right now, who is in our London bureau, where we are monitoring uh, all the developments coming out of Paris. Uh, Sarah? Hey, Lester. A, a church spokesman has told French media now that all of Notre Dame's cathedral's frame is burning after the spire collapsed. Just to give you an idea of, of the scale, I mean, we're also getting eyewitness reports that the roof has collapsed from people who were on the ground. We know from Elysee Palace that French President Emmanuel Macron is on his way to the scene. He's postponed a planned televised speech to the nation uh, in order to visit Notre Dame and see the scene for himself. Authorities are saying this fire could be linked to renovation work, as you mentioned earlier. It's unclear if anyone has been hurt. So far, though, we don't have any reports of casualties, which is pretty incredible when you look at the scale of this blaze. Yeah, yes, and you have, to, you have to wonder about the construction workers who may have been there at the time. It stays light awfully, awfully long this time of year uh, in, in Paris. So we don't know when the construction had knocked off uh, for the day. Um, I think That's I first exactly heard, right. heard about this at around, I guess it would have been around 7 o'clock um, uh, yes. Paris time. As best we can tell, the fire started around 7 o'clock. It's now just after 8, so it's been burning for a little over an hour based on the information we have right now. It seems that it closed to visitors shortly before the blaze broke out, which might help to explain why we don't have any casualty reports right now. But this is early days, Lester. As you can see, the fire still very much burning. This is still an active situation. Things could happen really quickly now. Yeah, the smoke plume seems to have lessened uh, somewhat, but we're still seeing some pretty intense flames coming in there. But the fact the smoke is dying down would seem to suggest that firefighters are getting water where they need it now. It can't be an easy place to fight a fire. Uh, certainly at the in, in the in the roof section, but uh, this is a, a live picture we're looking at now of the Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, the flames still uh, still licking quite high from the uh, from the roof area, that construction area. Uh, but there in that long shot, it appears to be uh, less smoke than we had seen before. And this cathedral has faced a destruction and disrepair before. There were two, at least two, major restorations in 1845 and then in 1991. But never before have we seen, Lester, what we're seeing now. The facade has remained largely intact through history to the original building of uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral. So what we're seeing here is beyond heartbreaking. Yeah, and there you see the firefighters. It's a tough angle they've got. They're at the, obviously at the end of their uh, of that telescoping uh, uh, truck they're on and, and trying to get that that uh, that water onto the fire itself. But no easy task. This is a this is a place that architecture buffs um, just just love to visit. You can see some of the flying buttresses there. The the French Gothic design. It's one of the finest examples of, uh, of the French. Uh, gothic design and and it draws people just for its uh, just the the architecture you can see more firefighters there um, again the water uh, they're at the about as far as high as they can get without going onto the roof itself just trying to get as much water as they can it seems to be having some effect uh, based on that the smoke but still lots of flame there and there's another another team going up 
Obviously, any time you have a restoration of this magnitude, and we could see in some of the early pictures just how much scaffolding there is, uh, there's concern, there's difficulty, there are very particular challenges with this, but it will be, and, and we've already heard from some officials in France that this will be the first place that they are looking for how this fire started. We should note, we mentioned a moment ago, the president had tweeted and suggested that a, a water tanker drop. I, my years of, of reporting, I don't think I've ever seen a water tanker used in an urban fire. I don't, uh, that's something we normally see in, in wildfire. So I don't think that is probably on the option list here. But uh, I, I mentioned it because the president mentioned it. But this is going to have to be um, just, just getting as much water as they can to that roof. And uh, you can see that's a tough angle there. Uh, typically, they like to be able to shoot straight in or down onto the fire. There's also, uh, famously, the, the structure itself um, is wood timber. The framing of it, the interior framing of it is wood timber involving about 52 acres of trees dating back to the 12th century. And every single beam in that structure was made for, from an individual tree. So that, that lattice of the woodwork um, that's so famous in the cathedral was actually nicknamed the forest. And uh, it, it was also one of the very earliest, you talked about the architectural significance, one of the earliest structures that had those famed exterior flying buttresses that have become so iconic. This angle really gives you a, an idea of the size of the construction scaffolding that had been erected there. It's a significant, significant uh, uh, setup. What may have been taking place there today that could have sparked this um, you know, we, we may not know for some time, and, and hopefully the construction crews had left or were able to uh, beat a hasty retreat as those flames got out of control. Uh, this shot, yeah, this is, from the, uh, this is from the rear side. This looks like this might be from, there's another island, St. Louis, I believe, across the way. Um, there are a number of exterior statues, which you'll recall from your visit there. And I had heard in the early reporting that I was checking again uh, in French media that many of those statues, because of the scaffolding, had already been taken down in order to get up the For scaffolding. So at least we know that those would have been saved. Would have been preserved. You and I were um, uh, in Paris uh, a few years ago for the Bataclan theater yes. attack. Uh, and. Uh, you know, watching that city mourn and, and, and deal with that crisis. They have had, uh, you know, dealing with terrorism, they have had uh, uh, more than their share of uh, turmoil in Paris over the last few years. Uh, this uh, does not appear to be terrorism. It just appears right now to be an accident, but no less, uh, no less painful for the people of Paris. I remember vividly when we were there uh, Lester, talking to residents of Paris and them talking about their pride in their city. They may not all have been on the same page politically. They may have lived in different parts of the city. But when that terror attack happened, they talked about their pride in the city, the beauty of the city, uh, how concerned they were at the time, not just for financial reasons, but because of pride of place. They were concerned about whether tourists would return, whether or not people would be afraid to come to Paris. And of course, what we've seen is that millions of people flock every year to Paris. And this is not just the number one place they visit, but twice as many people visit there as visit the Eiffel Tower. We want to uh, listen in our partners there. Uh Euro News and uh, Annalise Bourget is reporting from the scene. Let's listen. Enormous cry of disappointment, of shock. Um, people, a, a lady I spoke to a few moments ago uh, was very worried about her daughter who works nearby. For now, we have no uh, reports um, of anyone being injured. Authorities are, ha are said to have evacuated the building very quickly. But it is heartbreaking to see and Everywhere around me right now, people have their phones up or they're simply fixated in uh, that picture. That picture of um, the smokes, the thick smokes uh, going up and the roof that has now completely collapsed. There is uh, nothing left or nearly nothing left of uh, the Notre Dame roof. This is a very symbolic monument for Paris, a very important monument for the whole of the country. And so you can only imagine what the streets of Paris are like right now. Many people have been crying, have been 
manifesting their pain and, and their shock in watching these pictures. And what is very impressive is just the speed with which this whole thing has evolved because this fire was reported around um, 10 to 7 p.m. local time, so just over an hour and a half ago. And this is the result. Uh, pretty much the whole roof uh, has now collapsed. Sorry, ma'am, can I please ask you? Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I just, I'm just asking this, this uh, lady to, to move so you can see properly uh, what's happening right now. And it also it gives you an idea of just how many people are out in the streets right now. Um, many, as I said, have tears in their eyes and are extremely saddened to see this happen. Authorities are coming to the scene. The French president is said to be coming to the scene shortly. The mayor of Paris, whose office is just nearby, has already been to the Notre Dame. And, and so it's just it's a, a really, obviously a really, really sad day for Paris. Thank you very much, Annalise Borges. Now we'll be coming back to you, obviously, throughout the evening. That's uh, dipping into our partners uh, at, at Euro News. Annalise Borges reporting uh, from the scene there. And you can see now firefighters getting some healthy amount of water in the area where the most intense flames are coming out. There's uh, more firefighters working along a, uh, a balcony, if you will, uh, trying to position a place to get, you can see the flames now licking th inside. Uh, very, very difficult, very challenging uh, uh, building for firefighters to get a handle on this. If you're just joining us, this is the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, uh, heavily engulfed in flames. The spire uh, has collapsed, its main spire has collapsed. And we're told uh, the roof has collapsed and the interior walls are suffering significant damage as well. This occurred a uh, little after, maybe a little before 7 o'clock this evening, early evening at least, uh, in Paris, uh, around 2 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, a time when, uh, according to, to what I saw, uh, uh, Chris Jansen is here with what I saw on the web, I think they closed at 6.45 yes. for tourists. So it's been around the same time that uh, tourists were exiting that this broke out. But it is, uh, from all the accounts we're getting, it has brought Paris to a standstill, all eyes looking in the direction of the plume of smoke and the brilliant flames that can be seen for, uh, appear to be several miles, based on some of the pictures we've had from Paris. 13 million people visit this every year, and the exterior, obviously, so iconic. And there are all kinds of biblical stories that are, are illustrated on the exterior of this building, which you now see in flames. And, and part of the reason for that, and, and it's not unique to this cathedral, but when this was built, I, the, it began uh, construction in the 1100s, the first round of it finished in the mid, I think, 1200s. Most of the people were illiterate. And so the Bible stories were actually part of the architecture. It was in some ways a book for the Catholic faithful who could not read to see those stories displayed without even going inside the cathedral. Yeah, the uh, President uh, Macron has, uh, has tweeted, and the translation is Our Lady of Paris in Flames, emotion of a whole nation, thoughts for all Catholics and for all French, like all our countrymen, I'm sad tonight to see this part of us burn. That's uh, English translation of uh, uh, President Macron's uh, tweet of just a few moments ago. On the ground, uh, watching along with the rest of us, but up close is Carolyn Margolis, an American tourist uh, who is uh, in Paris right now. Carolyn, can you tell us how close you are to the scene and what you're seeing from your vantage point? Hi, yeah. Uh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so I'm a couple blocks away, about a good five to seven minute walk. I'm in a different area near the Centre Pompidou. Um, but I have a pretty clear view of Notre Dame. So if you're looking at the front, I'm on the left-hand side. So I have a left-hand side view of the church. And, and does it appear, is the fire lessening at all? Does it feel like they're getting a handle on it? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, the smoke originally, when we first saw it, as the flames were pretty small about an hour and a half ago now, or maybe an hour, uh, the flames were really big. They kept growing, but now it looks like it's being contained. Um, the smoke was originally pretty greenish, and then it turned orange, and then it turned black, and now it's back to being like a blackish, like a grayish color, only it's mostly coming from the very back underneath where the steeple was and where the altar of the church would be. And Carolyn, had you been, had you been visiting uh, the cathedral today or during your visit? 
Yeah, um, so I I actually live in France and I work about an hour away from here. So I had a friend who came and visited for a week. Um, and so we went to visit Notre Dame yesterday, I think. Um, Friday. Oh, on Friday, excuse me. Um, and so today we were going to be walking to Shakespeare and Company, which is right across the way, right across the Seine. Uh, we saw a huge pillar of smoke and we were like, oh, that looks like it's really close to Notre Dame. We walked even closer and saw it was Notre Dame herself. When you were there, um, were there signs of construction? Were there things? things that normally were uh, accessible to tourists that weren't because of the construction? Uh, I believe I don't believe so within the church. Uh, parts of it were closed off when we went because mass was occurring. Um, but there were some parts off to the side that were kind of closed off near where some of the gardens and some of the areas you can walk along the Seine. Um, but besides that, they're like within the church, nothing was closed off. No. All right. And you haven't uh, seen any signs of or heard anything about anyone being injured? Uh, no, the church actually closes at about 6.45, I believe, to prepare for Mass, because they have Mass every evening. Um, and so from my understanding, from what I've heard, uh, no one has been injured. My guess would be most of the injuries, if any occur from this, would have to do with the smoke. If you were downwind for this, it would be pretty bad. My friend and I were a couple blocks away, um, and even then we could feel some of the smoke and some of the ash hitting our face, and it felt like, a, I mean, an ashy rain. It was pretty gross. Yeah, it looked, it looked pretty significant on, on the views we were seeing as well. Uh, Carolyn Margolis, thank you very much for, for talking to us. As we noted, this, was the, uh, this is the uh, seat of the Archdiocese uh, of Paris, but a, a, a cathedral with such profound part of a uh, history of the Catholic Church. George Weigel is our Vatican expert who uh, often joins us for coverage of, of all things Vatican, but uh, can offer a little perspective about the importance of Notre Dame. George, good to have you on. Hi, Lester. It's a sad day, obviously. I'm, I'm really thinking about the beginning of that extraordinary television series Civilization by Kenneth Clark some 50 years ago. And the first shot in that series is Kenneth Clark standing in front of Notre Dame and saying, I'm not sure I know how to define civilization, but I know I'm looking at it. You know, uh, President Macron talked about the great loss to the entire French nation this is, a, this is a loss to the entire world. This uh, building, uh, almost a thousand years old, represents the human spirit at its noblest. Uh, the aspiration to goodness, to truth, to beauty. And to see it go up in smoke is a very, very uh, heartbreaking thing, I have to say. The... Uh... I, I noted that the Archdiocese of, of Paris is that that's the home home church there. Uh, is there a special responsibility with not only you know, leading the church in a city like Paris, but to have that as your home? Well, I think the Notre Dame symbolizes over 1500 years of, of Christian history in France. The building itself isn't that old, but it, it came to embody over the centuries the entire Christian experience in, in that part of, of Western Europe. Uh, and it's, it's wonderful architecture and glass, uh, I think, uh, embodied uh, the human spirit rising for something, seeking something nobler uh, than our own uh, self-aggrandizement, uh, seeking something transcendent. Amazing that this should be happening in Holy Week, the, the center of the Christian liturgical year. I'm also thinking of my friend, the former Archbishop of Paris, Cardinal Jean-Marie Lustige, uh, who's buried in Notre Dame. Uh, an astonishing figure, uh, child of victims of the Holocaust, uh, himself a convert to Catholicism, uh, chosen by John Paul II, the son of Polish Jews, uh, to be the Archbishop of Paris, uh, who made that cathedral the center of his ministry uh, for almost 20 years uh, and was a real light of, of reason and goodness and faith for, for all of the people of France, believers or not. So this is, a, this is a real tragedy for everyone, and it extends beyond France, I think, to everyone who loves beauty uh, and who loves truth. 
Yeah, well said. Uh, uh, George Weigel, uh, thank you for, for uh, speaking with us and giving us some historical perspective of this, uh, this, um, this amazing uh, cathedral in Paris. I want to go right back to uh, Sarah Harmon right now in our London bureau. Uh, Sarah, what more can you tell us? Well, Paris's deputy mayor says that first responders are now trying to salvage the art and the other priceless pieces that were stored in this cathedral. And Lester, the spire that we watched being destroyed is thought to have contained relics considered sacred to Catholics, including a relic believed to be from Jesus Christ's crown of thorns, relics from various saints. And we also know that the Paris prosecutor's office says it has started an inquiry into what caused this fire. A church official is saying the wooden interior of this 12th century landmark is burning, and he believes that as well is likely to be destroyed. So a tremendous scale of devastation as we watch this fire continue to burn over an hour since it started now. Yeah, still going, but uh, thankfully, at least in the vantage point from the outside, they appear to be getting somewhat of a handle on it, but still those brilliant flames now from the center of the cathedral. But looking here from the front, uh, you can also see this, the smoke plume has died down considerably as uh, uh, darkness begins to creep into, uh, uh, creep over Paris. Uh, 8.30 in the evening there now as we, uh, as we watch these live pictures of firefighters uh, now getting water to the flames themselves. Clearly not an easy feat given the, the size and shape and height of that, of that building. Uh, I think once one of the tallest structures in Paris before the Eiffel Tower. And you mentioned nightfall. If you look at any guidebook about Paris, they will talk about the monuments that are lit at night, Sacre Coeur, uh, the Eiffel Tower, and of course, the view of Notre Dame uh, after nightfall, all aglow in light, is one of the most spectacular sights anywhere. You know, you mentioned the Ile de la Cité, which is this island floating between the, the left and the right banks of the Seine. And, and if you're walking and you cross over the eastern end of the island, I think particularly at night, this cathedral, which is lit up, is is just almost beyond words how beautiful it is. And now, of course, it's a glow in flames. And it's like a, a gut punch uh, to think about what is being lost here. Uh, journalist Patrick uh, Gailey is, is there uh, right now. Uh, Patrick, uh, how close are you to this and, and what are you observing? Hi there. Um, I'm right on the banks of the river the other side because they've evacuated the island. So I'm probably about 90 meters away. I can see the rear of the two iconic towers and just to the left from where I'm looking at it, I can see the hole where the roof used to be and the spire used to be of Notre Dame. Were you, uh, had you been in the cathedral yourself? Uh, I have, yes, several times. Uh, I live here, so uh, whenever sort of friends or family visit, it's, uh, it's a must see. And especially if you climb up and you can look down and you get a sense of really how old the building is when you're there. We're, we're looking at the building, we're looking at the flames, but can you look around and, and tell me what it is like on the streets right now for Parisians and, and tourists alike to sit and to stand and, and watch this occur? Yeah, certainly. So I was there the moment that the spire fell down. It, it was clear that it was going to come down because of the, um, the way the fire was going. There was a huge crowd gathered just outside the town hall, which is the other side of the river. And when the tower came down, there was there were people crying, gasps, shouts of disbelief. Um, now, as the, as the evening sets in, um, I'm on the banks of the Seine. Um, people are sat quietly taking photos. They're talking to their friends. Some people have opened bottles of wine, and they're just taking in a scene with a sort of quiet, um, a quiet shock and disbelief. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you, you mentioned you live in Paris, and this is the uh, this is the must-go-to place, I'm sure, when you have visitors. Yeah, certainly, it's um, it's it's the it's sort of right in the heart of the city. Um, it's the one thing other than the Eiffel Tower that you can see, no matter where you turn. And the area around Notre Dame, the Ile de la Cité, is uh, you know it's the oldest part of Paris, uh, one of the oldest parts of Paris, and um, it's got an extremely gorgeous um, surrounding area of a lot of very old um, original buildings. Notre Dame um, survived everything that Paris has ever been through, the, the wars, the revolution, the commune, um, but a lot of it is not there tonight. Yeah. 
All right, uh, uh, Patrick Gailey, thank you, a journalist, uh, for checking in and giving us your perspective. Uh, so much of the fabric of this city, and, and as he alluded to, it's had a rough history of vandalism and, and destruction and restoration. And uh, anyone who knows just a, even a brief history of this place, I think, will have the confidence that it will it will rise again or it will be restored to its, its glory again. But uh, it's an awful shame that... Uh, for a long time, people will not be able to visit this amazing place. I always thought of this not just as a beautiful place, which is very obvious, Lester, but also a very joyous place. There's a large square out front, as you know. There are always street performers there. There are the usual souvenir sellers, and you can get your water and your snack. But there are always large groups of people, families, couples. I can't even tell you how many times I've been walking uh, across that square and someone has stopped me, a couple, would you mind taking our photo? It's just a very festive attitude. Even people who don't want to necessarily get in the line, depending on how long the line is, uh, the whole atmosphere around there is just one of positivity and beauty and a joyousness. I always loved if I was anywhere near there, even if I wasn't going inside the cathedral, to pass around it, to look at it and to see the scene, which was very iconically French. And also a place uh, of national mourning at times. I recall several years ago being there um, as a mass was held in honor of those who died on Air France Flight 447 that had uh, uh, crashed after leaving uh, uh, Brazil. Um, and, you know, it was, it was a solemn place as we have ours, you know, St. Patrick's Cathedral yes. in New York, but a place that uh, where people would come to, to heal and to, um, to mark uh, solemn moments. And that solemn moment now is what is happening at, uh, at uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, you can still see the, the, the glowing embers now from inside the church as the roof has been uh, eaten away. You can also see the scaffolding. I keep pointing out uh, that traverses much of, of that rooftop. That was uh, part of a restoration, a rebuilding project that was underway, and I'm sure it will be among the first things to be looked at as a potential uh, source uh, of this fire. But for now, it's about uh, trying to save uh, we understand the artwork, uh, some uh, pieces that can be saved from inside and to save as much of this uh, cathedral as is possible. Sarah Harmon, our NBC correspondent in our London newsroom, is continuing to monitor uh, the, the feeds and information coming out of Paris. Uh, Sarah? Yes, yeah, salvaging that artwork has got to be a huge priority for emergency services right now. We also know France's prosecutor has begun an inquiry into the cause of the fire, and that scaffolding that you mentioned, Lester, is certainly going to be a key focus as they look into what caused this historic building to break out in flames. We know that the spire has completely collapsed, but a church official is also saying that the whole wooden frame of Notre Dame is also burning. That's obviously very disturbing to think that the fire has gotten down that far. This is the most popular monument in all of France. It's more popular even than the Eiffel Tower. A huge loss for the city and one we don't even know the complete scale of yet. All Mr. right, uh, Sarah, thank you. Joining us on the phone now is uh, Bishop Robert Barron of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. Bishop Barron, thank you for, uh, for joining us. Mr. I'm just um, you know, devastated by this. I just got to L.A. I was in the car and just heard the news about this. Yeah, t tell us, uh, you know, this the historic significance for the Catholic Church of Notre Dame. Well, it's extraordinary, and I have a very personal connection to it. I studied in Paris. I got my doctoral, did my doctoral work there, and, and every Wednesday, for the three years I was there, I gave tours at Notre Dame. And so I lived about 10-minute walk from there, and it was a very special place for me personally. For Catholics, it's of extraordinary significance. Uh, you know, it's it's the maybe sharp surpassed in terms of, of beauty and integrity and all that, but of the Gothic Church is one of the most important, and it just sums up so much of, of the Catholic uh, history and spirit. Uh, it's meant to symbolize the, the body of Christ, meant to symbolize the cross, which you can see in the in the design of the cathedral. Um, it's this one that survived so much. It survived war and revolution and social change, and that's what's so devastating as I look at these pictures that after 800 years, you know, to see it compromised this uh, severely. And then those windows, there are so many windows from the 13th century in that building. And I'm, I'm 
you know, chagrined to think that they would be compromised. But and maybe, uh, you, maybe you can enlighten us on uh, the spire that we watched uh, crash down a little while ago. Uh, I understand that it contains significant relics. Well, you know, that's, I'm uh, so puzzled by that. When I was in Paris, the, the relics were in the, in the trésor, so-called the treasury. Uh, I don't know if they're in that spire. That spire was, was constructed in the 19th century. It's very beautiful. I'm looking at it now burning, which is heartbreaking. Um, it's, a, it's very striking, but it, it was part of the 19th century renovation of Notre Dame. Um, but much of that building is very, uh, is authentically medieval, um, especially the windows, which are magnificent. And there are a number of, uh, I know, uh, burial crypts inside the cathedral. Yeah, sure. Bishops and uh, the kings are, are buried up in Saint Denis. But uh, uh, yeah, we have bishops going back to the early Middle Ages buried there. Um, but spirit, it's a spiritual center, you know, for Catholicism, but also I think for all of Europe, it's a spiritual center. Uh, and then from a cultural standpoint, as, as I, you know, it was just said a few minutes ago, the most visited site in Paris, meaning one of the most visited sites in, in Europe. But it's heartbreaking as I look at these pictures, because I used to so often see Notre Dame there from the, the back. I would sit there by the Seine to read or to go for a walk, and it's the most magnificent sight overlooking the sun. So it's devastating to me, you know, personally as well as to all Catholics. Bishop Barron, good to talk to you again. Thank you for, uh, for joining us in our coverage here. You're quite welcome. Uh, President Emmanuel Macron uh, of, uh, of France says the fire that's consuming Notre Dame is taking part of everyone in France with it. Uh, President Trump is speaking about it. Now let's listen. No cathedral. I think I could say this probably no cathedral in the world like it. It's a, tar it's a terrible scene. They think it was caused by, at this moment, they don't know, but they think it was caused by renovation. And I hope that's uh, the reason. Renovation, you know, what's that all about? But it's a terrible sight to behold. Uh, with that being said, uh, I want to President. tell you that a lot of progress has been made by our country. And the last two and a half years. Hard to believe we're already starting to think about. President Trump uh, and on a trip to Minneapolis, uh, but before getting out of the business at hand, uh, noting what we're all feeling is this uh, the sense of sadness over uh, what we're seeing from Paris. Uh, Notre Dame uh, on fire right now, a significant fire that has destroyed uh, a good portion of the roof. And we understand even the interior walls now are threatened. Uh, the flames dying down somewhat, but still uh, uh, still easy to see as they continue to pour water on Notre Dame. 8.45 in the evening there. This, uh, this broke out around, uh, would have been around 7 o'clock um, Paris time this evening. Uh, Hallie Jackson is, uh, is at the White House. Hallie, we heard a little bit about the president there. He had tweeted and now making these comments. Yeah, talking about what a terrible fire this has been. Lester, as you mentioned, he is in Minnesota. He is there, and he was just beginning his remarks as we cut away from them on his tax law, trying to rally support for that. But clearly what is capturing his attention is what is capturing the attention of so many people, not just in this country and in Europe, but around the world, this fire at Notre Dame as, as the night begins to fall there. We know that the First Lady, not only has the President been talking about this and has been made aware of this, but the First Lady was as well. She was briefed prior to remarks that she made to members of the military and their families down in Fort Bragg today. She has requested updates. We've also seen reaction from, for example, Vice President Mike Pence, from Ivanka Trump as well, the President's, of course, daughter and senior advisor. So clearly this is something that President Trump is watching. What we'll be waiting to find out is if and when he will reach out to his counterpart in France, Emmanuel Macron, to offer sympathy or support, for example. The president is tied up in a couple of different meetings and roundtables this afternoon, but that is something we are asking the White House about as well. So far, the State Department, of course, on top of this, they know this is happening, and we're looking to see any reaction from our embassies around the world, Lester. All right, Hallie Jackson, thank you. And President Macron is said to be heading to the scene there in Notre Dame. He says he sees a part of us being on fire, meaning a part of France uh, being on fire. Emmanuel Macron, uh, again, on his way to the scene there. There's uh, uh, some more flame from the interior, but clearly uh, we have seen less fire and less smoke. And that's a great thing. Aaron Zelensky is with the... Uh, works with the Daily Beast. He is in Paris right now. Uh, Aaron, can you tell us what you're seeing? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's 
a bit of a chaotic scene here. The police have uh, shut down two major metro stations, several bridges, several roads. It's I'm very difficult to get too close. But even, I'm a bit down uh, the river Senate, even from a ways away, I can still see smoke coming from the cathedral and uh, flames earlier as well, but those seem to have died down a bit. Aaron, what was it like when word began to spread that Notre Dame was on fire? Aaron, you still with me? Yes. Yeah, what was it like? Uh, I don't know where you were when it broke out, but can you give us a sense what it was like as word rippled across Paris that Notre Dame was on fire? Well, I live uh, on the opposite side of the city, so it came through uh, initially on news wires. And at first, it, people uh, didn't react too strongly. I mean, there's maybe there was a trash can on fire, but then as the word got out that it was quite a major fire, there was some photos showing up on social media, uh, a lot of shock and devastation, I would say. But this cathedral is it's an iconic symbol of the city, the way the Eiffel Tower is. Yeah, there is such intense pride in, uh, in this particular landmark, and it's a city with an overabundance of amazing and beautiful places, but um, this ranks at the top, I think, for a lot of people. Aaron, thank you very much uh, for joining us, and um, joined now by Ann Thompson, NBC News correspondent here in the studio in New York. Uh, you have been there, I'm sure, a number of times, Many and, times, uh, and what are your thoughts as you watch this, and what can you tell us? Uh, you know, when I saw that spire collapse, all I could think of was it was like watching a dagger go through the heart of Paris. Um, that is what Notre Dame is to that city. It is not just a cathedral for Catholics. It is a source of pride for all Parisians, and to see that spire fall is something we never thought, I certainly never thought I would ever see anything like this. I mean, when you think about this cathedral, it, it was built in 1160. It has survived all kinds of renova renovations. It was defaced during the French Revolution. And then today, a fire, tonight a fire takes it. I think what's equally amazing as we sort of watch these sickening pictures is at this point, we have no reports of injuries. And uh, Notre Dame traditionally closes at um, 6.45 at night, and that was just before this fire broke out. So it is amazing, and kudos to the people in the cathedral if they were able to get all the tourists out before anything happened but you think of uh, you think of that building and it's a wonderful way to see paris um I, about a decade ago i brought my nephew to paris and we went up the north tower and he was 15 years old he loved the gargoyles he <laughs> thought those yeah. were pretty cool i was fascinated with the rose windows there are three of them in that in the cathedral but the cathedral aside from being the the heart of the catholic church there is also significant because there are three relatives relics there, and apparently the three relics were in the spire that fell, and it, supposedly a piece of the crown of thorns that Jesus Christ wore on the day he was crucified, and that will be celebrated in the Catholic Church on Good Friday. That was one of the relics, as well as um, relics from St. Genevieve and St. Denis, two very important saints in um, the French Catholic Church. A live picture of Notre Dame, the fire continuing to burn at the center of it, but uh, clearly not at the level we had seen uh, for the better part of an hour as a heavy uh, a billow of smoke, uh, a plume, uh, rose up and across the city of Paris. Uh, we have seen pictures of the ground of people just standing there witnessing this uh, with a sense of disbelief and, and sadness. And I think the French president uh, uh, spoke so well when he said it's a it's a it, it took a part of uh, it's a part of Paris it's a part of uh, France that they are, are losing tonight such a part of this city's identity um, a city that's known a fair amount of tragedy I noted earlier I'd been there a, a few years back for the uh, a series of terror attacks the Bataclan theater the, the target of that there was uh, before that the Charlie Hebdo uh, terror attack so it, it is a city that has uh, known its fair share of tragedy and heartbreak over the last uh, last several years. Annalise, Annalise Bourget from uh, our partners Euronews is on the phone right now. Annalise, uh, what can you tell us? Does it appear they're making progress? 
Well, uh, not exactly. We have seen over the last uh, hour or so the roof of the cathedral virtually collapse in its entirety. I don't think there's anything left of the roof, at least from where I stand. I cannot see any single part of the roof. Uh, what I can see from here is that the flames are intensifying once again um, over the last yeah, 30 minutes or so. It started to um, burn once again from inside the church. The efforts of firefighters and there are quite a few of them, of course, that have been deployed to the scene um, ha seems to be in vain uh, so uh, far. And it is uh, quite heartbreaking to see, not only from where I stand, uh, but also from, of course, the perspective of the residents and the tourists alike. Uh, I have thousands of people around me right now who have been here uh, standing in shock, watching as this monument, uh, this uh, very important and iconic symbol of this city, but of this entire country, burns right in front of their eyes. Annalise, have you heard any, any indications or any word of uh, potential injuries in this? No, so far we have uh, not uh, have any reports of uh, injured people. We, I spoke to a resident uh, that lives nearby. She was quite concerned about her family, but so far authorities have not um, reported any injuries. We do understand that tourists were evacuated from the church quite quickly uh, in the first uh, first signs of, of, of fire and i spoke to a few tourists who were inside the church as the fire started and they said the authorities were indeed very very fast but of course we have yet to, to um get a full report of just why this happened in the first place and just what is the cause of uh, this fire and exactly um how this has uh, come to happen we do understand that, that this church was under renovation and uh, there are some local channels here in France that have been reporting that this fire may have started as a consequence, as an accident within that process, that renovation work. But once again, no confirmation of the cause of the fire, nor if there are any injured. Annalise, thank you. The roof gone there as the flames now uh, continue to pour from the, from the upper section of Notre Dame as nightfall is upon Paris. And, and on that uh, note about the potential cause, we've received word that the Paris prosecutor's office has opened an official investigation to determine the cause of this fire, even as firefighters continue to suppress those flames. Let me go to, to Sarah Harmon right now. She's uh, monitoring all this from our London newsroom where we're taking in uh, the bulk of our information. Uh, Sarah, what more can you tell us? Hey, Lester. Well, our, our producer on the ground is, is saying, as you said, that the Paris prosecutor is opening an investigation, but also that that prosecutor is at the scene along with the French president looking into the cause of the blaze. As we heard from Annalise, the fire continues to burn, and a key focus is going to be on that scaffolding. What role, if any, that played? Um, we also know that first responders are trying desperately to salvage the art and the relics and the, the priceless pieces that were inside of Notre Dame. Uh, we also had earlier a cathedral spokesman saying this wooden interior in Notre Dame is burning. That is not a good sign when you think about the priceless pieces of art that are stored inside this building, that the fire has now reached that level, according to this cathedral spokesman, Lester. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. Uh, it took uh, roughly 200 years to complete this mm -hmm. cathedral, Anne. Um, and even as we look at this immense destruction, when you look at the history of this place, you do get the sense of comfort. It'll be back. You do. I mean, this is such an important structure to the people of Paris that it is not something that they are just going to let burn and diminish. It is truly, it is as much a symbol of Paris as the Eiffel Tower, and it is a spiritual symbol of Paris. Um, and a spiritual symbol to the world. You know, they spoke, this is, Annalise was talking about how the fire seemed to be getting more intense. That may be because of that wooden interior, which is now fueling 
the flames. Um, but it is stunning when you think so far that we have no injuries here. 30,000 people a day, Lester, go through this cathedral on very busy weeks. And this would have been one of them because it's Holy Week in the Catholic Church, um, where we will have Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and then, of course, Easter Sunday, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. At the end, you could get up to 50,000 people through that cathedral on a day like and this. And I have seen long lines here before to go up in the tower. Uh -huh. And again, uh, given the closing time and what we know about when this fire, thank goodness that tower should have been empty of, of people. And, and, it, it, and that is, if there is a blessing in all of that, it, it, all of this, it would be that. But this, this scene is something like, I don't think anyone in Paris has ever or could even imagine, even despite the history where this where this church has been a target, particularly during the um, French Revolution. But it is it is such a piece of the skyline of Paris, part of that city that no one would ever think this could happen. Yeah, you look to your left, and I think it's to your left. There's the uh, there's the the, uh, the Eiffel Tower, and then uh, of course Notre Dame. As you got mm -hmm. the other two places that uh, the people that uh, tend to want to go first on their trips to Paris, an amazing place, an amazingly difficult firefighting effort too as well as we've uh, witnessed, over, I've witnessed over the years of urban firefighting challenges. This appears to be a, a significant one here given the roof has now given way, some of the interior walls themselves. Right, and if people haven't been to Paris, what you may not know is that Notre Dame is actually on an island. There are these two little islands in, uh, on the, in, in the city of Paris in the middle of the Seine and Notre Dame is, or Notre Dame, excuse me, is on one of them, and that just makes it all the more difficult. But talking to eyewitnesses today, they say what, it, what first people were shocked. They didn't quite understand what was going on. They were taking pictures, and now there's just kind of a stunned silence watching the destruction of this building. So awful to see. And thank you very much. Our Richard Engel will have a live report from Paris when I see you in a little while. For NBC Nightly News, we'll have continuing coverage on NBC News, our NBC News app. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York, a day. You could hear the gasps, and this is one of the most iconic places anywhere in Europe. I think uh, as we watch night fall, that if you look at any guidebook of Paris, they tell you, look at the Eiffel Tower at night and look at Notre Dame at night, and people walk along the Seine, and it is an awe-inspiring sight on any night tonight. It is a gut punch. Hello, I am Chris Jansing in for Ali Velshi, and we continue our coverage of this breaking news from Paris, an absolutely devastating fire at the iconic Notre Dame Cathedral just days before Easter. The cathedral spokesperson told reporters the whole frame of the cathedral is burning. The entire interior wooden structure is likely to be destroyed. Notre Dame is, of course, not just an important place of worship. It is the seat of the Archbishop in Paris. It is one of the world's most famous tourist attractions, the most visited place in Paris because of its architecture and invaluable works of art, which even as we speak, First responders are trying to save from inside that building. The cathedral, you could see if you saw some of the earlier pictures, all the scaffolding, it was under renovation. It's not yet clear just how the fire started near the spire. And then just about an hour ago, part of that famous spire, as Stephanie said, collapsed. Oh my God, this people just fell inside the church. <gasps> oh, my oh my God. Oh my God. It just, it, yeah, it just fully collapsed to the inside of the church. On the church, there's the part that y'all, the people have probably seen before with the big um, rows in the middle and the two towers. And then there's the part of the church and there's a large steeple in the back. And that was where the fire seems to have originated. And joining us now is an eyewitness, Gina Natale, who is near the cathedral right now. Gina, are you in a state of shock? Uh, yes, I think everyone is in a state of shock. Um, you know, we're, we're just visiting uh, my friend and I from Chicago, and we were uh, within blocks of the cathedral um, just before it happened. And, um, you know, it was like any other day. Uh, and then we um, started receiving, uh, we didn't actually, you know, see it, uh, the smoke ourselves at first, and we started receiving 
lots and lots of text messages from friends back home. And when we got back to our apartment, we could see the skyline filled with smoke, um, big plumes of dark gray smoke uh, coming off of um, the cathedral. So uh, quite, quite devastating. Are you still in the apartment now? And what can you see? Uh, we are in the apartment now. Um, the, there's no more smoke in the sky, um, so we, we can't see very much. But um, right about 15 minutes after um, it was set on fire, we, we saw just, I mean, the plumes went from the cathedral all the way across the skyline, um, even over the Eiffel Tower, which if you're not familiar, you know, that's quite far um, on the other side of, uh, of the city. So um, very high, dark gray, very big. Um, and we could also see plumes when the um, fire fell. We could see new plumes forming and, and coming up. It was, um, yeah, quite shocking. When you realized that it was Notre Dame that was on fire, did you leave the apartment? Did you try to go near it? I just wonder sort of what the reaction on the street was, if you saw or spoke to anyone. Uh, so we didn't see or speak to anyone. We've got, um, we have a view from a top floor, so we wanted to see it from above, what that was our sort of best vantage point. But we, um, we could hear a lot of sirens. We're in what is normally, um, you know, the past few days we've been here, a very quiet neighborhood. And um, just all we could hear was sirens starting um, and lots of them. Had you had a chance to go inside Notre Dame this visit? Oh, I have to tell you, I'm so sad. Um, we visited the outside of it yesterday, and we made an, a, a, a point to, you know, we're going to come back to it in a few days. Um, uh, we didn't have time yesterday to go inside, and, of course, we took for granted it would still be there. Yeah, it's hard to describe to people, even that you didn't get to go inside, but I was just mentioning moments ago, wherever you're walking around that part of the Seine, whenever uh, you are in that area, you are drawn to the cathedral. It is an awe-inspiring sight, is it not? Yeah, it is. I mean, it's an iconic uh, monument uh, to both, obviously, um, you know, um, religion and architecture. And uh, we just we feel so uh, awful for um, the people of Paris and the people of France. Are you feeling now as though everything's okay? You said that the smoke had stopped. Is there smoke in your building? How far away exactly are you? So we're actually, we're uh, in the 17th arrondissement. So we're um, uh, the northwest of where the Notre Dame is. And, um, you know, we were, we're safe. We're far enough away that we're safe. Um, but, uh, you know, there was a good hour of smoke coming from the building because uh, we got home just as um, the just a few probably 10 minutes after the fire started uh, and so we saw the smoke basically from when it started to, to when it dissipated. Well Gina Natale we thank you so much time uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, appreciate um, that you had a chance to talk to us we do have a team of reporters and experts to help us understand the enormous significance of these moments. NBC News' uh, Sarah Harmon is uh, joining us and art historian Elizabeth Lev, who is based in Rome but spends a lot of time in Paris, including a lot of last summer. Sarah, I want to bring you in first. Uh, get us up to date. What do we know? What happened here? Hey, Chris. Well, the absolute latest is we now have eyewitnesses saying that this massive fire has spread to one of Notre Dame's iconic rectangular towers. Now, NBC has not been able to independently confirm this yet, but our bureau is across the story. We're trying to bring you the very latest. This has been devastating. We saw the spire collapse earlier. Um, a French writer and historian Camille Pascal saying that this is the destruction of invaluable heritage. We're horrified by what we see. We also do have the first bit of good news, Chris, out of Paris. We've learned that 16 religious statues were actually removed for the peak for the first time in a century because they were being cleaned and therefore they escaped the fire. The latest information that we have is that emergency responders are now trying desperately to move some of the very valuable artwork and relics out of Notre Dame to try and save it from the blaze and from the smoke. 
right now we do not have any reports of deaths, which is, which is pretty incredible when you think about the scale of this blaze in an urban area. The Paris prosecutor has opened an investigation, and a key focus of that investigation is likely to be this ongoing renovation that you mentioned and the scaffolding that was outside part of the exterior. Right now, based on what we know, it does appear the fire is still burning about two hours after it began. That's the latest we have for you, Chris. Sarah, stay with us, if you will. I want to go to Liz Lev, who many of you know for, uh, from uh, our coverage often out of Rome. But, Liz, I know you've spent quite a bit of time in Notre Dame. Uh, you are an art historian. And you just heard Sarah talk about the fact that there are first responders who are going in trying to save what they can. Explain to us, in terms of the art world, what's at stake here? Well, I think in, in this day where we're all sort of mourning together, one of the first things that comes to mind is this is one of the reasons why I became an art historian. This church is a mixture of human ingenuity, problem solving, and then at the same time a vision of transcendence. And every single thing about that church is a work of art. So already with these extraordinary uh, design that, that, that was really an innovation for the very first time, we have the first flying buttresses, for example, in Notre Dame, the first time they could open up walls by supporting them on the outside, making that beautiful tendril effect that people love to see. As a matter of fact, you've been watching the smoke billowing around those tendrils. In the interior of that church, despite revolutions, despite being emptied out to become a temple of reason during the course of the French Revolution, that church has maintained a great many beautiful artistic treasures, everything from its choir, where the kings of France would would sit with this very elaborate 15th century stories of Christ all the way around it. You have an exceptionally beautiful statue given by Louis the Thirteenth, and then later his son of these offering up their crowns and their glory to the to the Virgin. Uh, you have many statues of the Blessed Virgin. You have these magnificent paintings called Les May, these, these paintings that the, that, the, that the city of Paris would give to the, to, the, to the cathedral once a year. So, I mean, it really is an invaluable series of treasures that are contained in there. And so much history that happened there as well, Liz. I mean, Henry VI was crowned there, uh, Mary Stuart. I think uh, in 1804, Napoleon got the Pope there because he wanted him to crown him. And then I think Napoleon ended up crowning himself. But the amount of history that has happened in that building is extraordinary. I mean, this, this building was begun at, what, in 1163, everything from its, its, its construction. The achievements in the construction, it started out in one style, and as they were building in the Romanesque style, they developed this brand new Gothic style with these new ideas. And so you have the, 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 the incredible um, uh, steps forward, the strides forward in design. Then you move into the historical wealth. This was the church of the weddings of the kings of France. There are three churches in France that were used for, that were used for for royalty. One was for funerals, so that was the Saint Denis. One was for coronations, that was Reims. And it was Notre Dame that was used for these exceptional weddings. You also have, of course, as you said, the famous coronation of Napoleon on December December 4th in 1804, this, this incredible parade, which we have many, many beautiful paintings, which culminated in, the, in, the, in Napoleon taking the crown out of the hands of the Pope. But it's also seen destruction. And I think this is a good thing for us to remember, that while it's never seen the devastation that, that, that it's experiencing today, that church was, it saw its statues beheaded and its stained glass broken. It saw the church emptied. It saw the church uh, shot, shot through at the end of World War II, and yet that church has always come back. It has always renewed itself. It's always, always revived. And I believe that, that this church, this time, Notre Dame, will revive once again. Stay with us, if you will, Liz. The U.S. Uh, Conference of Bishops uh, here in, in Washington has issued a statement. The horrific fire that is engulfing the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris is shocking and saddens us all. For this particular cathedral is not only a majestic church, it is also a world treasure. Noble in architecture and art, it has 
long been a symbol of the transcendent human spirit as well as our longing for God. Our hearts go out to the Archbishop and the people of Paris and we pray for all the people of France and trusting all to the prayers and intercession of the Mother of God, especially the firefighters battling the fire. We are a people of hope and of the resurrection, and as devastating as this fire is, I know that the faith and love embodied by this magnificent cathedral will go stronger in the hearts of all Christians. And Anne Thompson joins us as well, and they use the use, they, the use of the word resurrection. Easter is coming up. It is the most important holy day on mm -hmm. the Catholic calendar. There would be events there all week long. Uh, the Mass on Easter would be... Not something you think of when you think of church, a hot ticket. <laughs> it would be standing room only without any doubt, Chris. And this is certainly one of the busiest weeks of the year, I'm sure, for the Notre Dame Cathedral. Um, usually they have 30,000 people a day go through there. On their bu really busy weeks, it could be as high as 50,000. So that gives you an like, kind of idea of what kind of magnet it is. The USCCB's statement called Notre Dame a world treasure, and indeed it is. And in fact, when you were reading that statement, we could see, you know, they have those dinner boats that go up mm. and down the Seine, and going past Notre Dame is a very important part of that tour at night. And then to see it this way is just absolutely unbelievable and especially during this the whole during holy week i mean think of what would have been there holy thursday reenacting the last supper where the archbishop would watch the feet of 12 people to represent the apostles the silence of good friday when we remember the crucifixion of jesus christ and then of course the joy of easter sunday all of that is now gone to say nothing of what this means, not just to Catholics, but to Christians and to the people of Paris in general. It is as much a symbol of Paris, the Cathedral of Notre Dame, as the Eiffel Tower. Sarah, I was remembering uh, that when I was in Paris for quite a while after the horrific uh, Bataclan attacks, one of the things that the people of Paris told me so repeatedly was they hoped that this would not keep people away. Whatever they, their per, political thoughts may be, however they felt about what was going on in, in France in general, the pride in the beauty of their city, of places like Notre Dame, that it has long been such a magnet for people, and the awe-inspiring nature of this, uh, another horrific heartbreak for the city of Paris. Yes, and we know that 400 firefighters are on the scene attempting to put right. out this blaze. This is one of Paris's most iconic monuments. More people visit Notre Dame than the Eiffel Tower, for example. It's in many ways synonymous with the city, and to watch it burn over the last several hours is a real gut punch, not just for Paris, but for anyone who loves art or history. This is devastating and historic. There's going to be an investigation. We know the Paris prosecutor has opened an investigation and is now on the scene of this burning cathedral. One of the focuses is likely to be the renovation work that was going on. This cathedral was undergoing a $6.8 million renovation at the time the fire broke out. There was scaffolding on the exterior. And it's very likely that that's where they'll start looking. What caused this blaze? But first, they have to put it out. And based on the information we have right now, this fire is still burning. And this is very much an active situation in Paris right now. And with me now is the former director of FEMA and former Miami-Dade County Fire Chief uh, David Paulison, who is an expert in fighting fires in historic buildings. So let me just ask you, uh, first, the immediate question, which is the challenges that are facing firefighters right now. You know, I can't even imagine what's going through these firefighters' brain right now with this beautiful building, a 1,000-year-old building. It took 300 years to build, and uh, the fact that they're being tasked with saving what's left of this building. Uh, you know, Paris uh, has a great, great fire department, very great, good firefighters, so I know they're doing everything I could possibly do. I also appreciate the fact that we just heard that they're also going in and taking out as many of those paintings uh, and historic uh, uh, artifacts that they can to get out of that building. Uh, I I've, I've, uh, read on one of the blogs here that the, now they think that one of the towers, the fire has moved into one of the towers. Hopefully that's not true. And also then hearing to, to add to that more concern, well, 
plenty of concern, obviously, but more concern then about the square towers to the right of the spire. You will just see, let me show you that shot one more time. Yeah, there they are. Uh, this is the live shot again. I may have mentioned it. The looks more to me like a light flashing in that right-hand tower, rather hopefully a fire, but there are reports of the fire spreading to one of the towers, certainly now taking hold in part of the body of the cathedral itself, and we've been hearing from the deputy mayor of Paris saying that efforts are being made to rescue what they can in terms of the huge number of, of art and religious treasures that are in that cathedral, rescuing what they can, we understand. Now, I, I think that we may be able to talk to uh, another witness. Yes, uh, we can. David Fuang uh, joins me now on the line. Uh, a very good evening to you, Mr. Fuang. I, I understand you live in Paris. Uh, exactly, yeah. And uh, tell me, OK, well, well tell me um, what you saw when you became aware of the fire in Notre Dame. So basically, I was uh, taking the newer stop back to Paris. Uh, I was joining a friend at his place. He lives in Père Lachaise, but quite up high on his building. He lives on the seventh floor. And he sent me a message saying that there was a fire somewhere, like a huge fire. And then when the smoke kind of like dissipated, like he realized that it was Notre Dame. Uh, I was at his place about five to ten minutes later, and we saw basically giant flames coming out of, of uh, Notre Dame. Uh, so we basically saw the entire the entirety of the events uh, live from the peak. I don't know what you call it in English, but like the the back of the cathedral like collapsed, and uh, as of now you can still see like uh, glow from the furnace, and also like there was a bit of a glow in one of the towers. So I don't know. We're not exactly sure what's going on, but it's it's still going. Mm. How long ago was it that uh, you? You guess it broke out when you first saw it? Um, I mean, according to my friend Thibault, it started breaking out around, uh, like, at 7. OK, so that's uh, 6 o'clock UK time, where we're now yeah, behind. Yeah. And how far away are you? Um, I mean, Pierre Lachaise is, is a good distance away, but it's, it's, the, the colours are quite vivid, so it, it kind of, like, gives us an indication of how intense the fire was. It really does. Now, you yeah. touched upon it there, David, and uh, we're hearing those reports, getting reports from some of the authorities in Paris. We know about the, the roof, we saw the spire go, but those twin towers, those, those square towers, we are getting a report that the flames may have reached one of them. And you, you, you said you may be seeing some, something going on there. Well, from what we're saying, we got, we got a pretty direct view from uh, the entire of the entirety of Notre Dame. So originally, like the back of, of Notre Dame, obviously was was up in flames. But uh, not too long, like a few minutes ago, there seems to be kind of like a, a some kind of glow in the. So if you're standing um, in front of Notre Dame, it will be the left one, uh, which has a bit of a glow from coming from the inside. I don't really see it now, but it was there like a couple of minutes ago, definitely. My goodness me. Uh, have you been there? To Notre Dame? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the iconic locations of, of Paris, of course. Uh, and whenever we have um, friends or families that, you know, who've never been to Paris before, that's one of the must-go places to, uh, to visit, you know. Absolutely. And just this, this sense, I, I mean, are you almost in disbelief at the moment that such damage is being done to that place? Well, it's, it's always a, a big shock when something as, as iconic as Notre Dame, um, you know, is getting basically destroyed in front of your eyes. And, and for my friend's place, which is, you know, quite amazing, is that you can see the entirety of the Parisian sites, you know, iconic sites from the Eiffel Tower and just... Uh, a few minutes ago, we, we took a picture of the, you know, the, every hour the Eiffel Tower is kind of like sparkling, and, and next to it you got Notre Dame, which is up in flames, which is um, quite a striking image uh, that is, you know, that can be embedded in your memory of, you know, what the city is now. What a contrast. Thank you very much indeed for describing yeah. to us. Uh, David Fuang there. Welcome. With, uh, Welcome.
a fairly distant view, but uh, as uh, Mr. Fuang was saying, they're giving uh, a real sense of just how intense those flames are. He's uh, a couple of miles away, I'd say, at, uh, at least looking down on those flames, which as you may have heard him describe there, saying, and we can see for ourselves, still burning in the, the body of the cathedral, but reports that uh, they may have spread to one of those towers. We're also hearing, uh, I've been mentioning, President Macron was due to make a major address to the nation this evening about uh, the protests that have been affecting France over the last six months or so, the Gilets Jaunes, um, and uh, his recipe, his recommendations of how to address some of their many concerns. That's been cancelled for obvious reasons, and we are now hearing that President Macron is somewhere on the scene there, presumably talking to some of the officials, some of the firefighters, trying to deal with what is still a major operation in Notre Dame. Uh, let's check in with our foreign affairs editor, Deborah Haynes, who's uh, monitoring uh, events like that. So, um, Deborah, are you hearing that? Uh, the understanding that President Macron is now nearby? Yes, well, <clears throat> it can't be surprising that he would want to be um, right there at the scene of this incredible tragedy, not just for France, but as you've been saying, for the whole world. Um, and we know that he's cancelled that speech that he was going to be doing about the other crisis that's been gripping him um, in terms of the Gilets Jaunes, the, the sort of the yellow vest protests that have been going on every week for the last 20 weeks or so. Um, we're also seeing um, more comments coming in uh, from world leaders expressing their distress at these scenes. Um, there are quotes from Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, um, a, a tweet in French actually from um, one of her spokespeople quoting her saying that it's with a deep sadness that um, she's watching the events in, in Paris um, and how the Notre Dame is a symbol of France and of our European culture in flames. Um, we are thinking of our French friends. Um, that is my unofficial translation of the tweet. Um, there's still nothing yet from Theresa May on social media, but the British ambassador um, to France, um, Ed Llewellyn, he has taken to Twitter to say um, heartbreaking images from, Not from Notre Dame Cathedral this evening. All our thoughts with the heroic firefighters as they battle this terrible blaze. And also, interestingly, Westminster Abbey's um, Twitter feed has um, tweeted tonight, devastated for our friends at Notre Dame and for the people of France. You are in our thoughts and prayers tonight. So it really sort of shows how this is um, affecting everybody that, um, that knows and has visited um, Paris, knows Notre Dame and understands the, the, the loss that we're, we're seeing in front of our eyes as, as the cathedral burns. Deborah, thank you very much indeed. Uh, monitoring uh, events here on the news wires, the information uh, coming into us uh, saying that, and this is important, that uh, remarkably it may seem, given the number of people that flock to Notre Dame every single day of the week and the numbers that were there today in this uh, Easter holiday week, that there have been, this is being reported, that there are no injuries, no casualties reported as yet by the Parisian authorities. Uh, also, that an investigation is already underway, as those flames still haven't entirely been put out, far from it in actual fact, uh, that uh, an investigation is underway and uh, the authorities in Paris looking into a potential link between this uh, six million euro restoration that has been taking place at the cathedral for quite some time now, uh, particularly the, the roof containing all that wood and of course that lead. Um, they're saying that uh, the investigation is saying it's potentially linked to that restoration. Okay, um, our s diplomatic editor Dominic Wackhorn uh, is in Paris. Uh, he's been in Paris waiting to cover the uh, speech by Emmanuel Macron about the Gilets Jaunes protests. In, uh, Stead is uh, reporting for us now on this fire in Notre Dame Cathedral. And uh, we can see for ourselves, Dominic, over your right shoulder there, the smoke, the flames, the cathedral still lit up from inside. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what is uh, of, of concern here now to update you is that we were saying earlier the two, tone sto two stone towers that are the iconic front facade of the 
Notre Dame Cathedral. Uh, if you'll have uh, seen the Hunchback of Notre Dame, or if you've ever been to Paris, or if you've ever uh, known anything about Paris, those two towers will be as famous uh, as the Eiffel Tower, and as, uh, I think, uh, iconic as the Eiffel Tower to you. Uh, we were in front of them about uh, 45 minutes or so ago, and they seemed un touched by the fire, which has consumed almost all of the wood and part of the cathedral behind it, at least. But uh, it looks like the hoses, the fire hoses, now being trained on certainly in the northern tower. Now, whether that's precautionary or whether it's a sign that the flames may have got into one of those towers, I can't say from here, but of course it will be of concern. One um, tourist I was talking to earlier was saying, you know, she really hopes that the, the stone structure, the, the, the frame, the stone frame of the building at least can be saved uh, because uh, it's clearly the wooden part of it has almost completely, if not completely, been consumed by flames. And that's what you're seeing now burning, is the wooden heart, the, the sort of the guts of the building are going up in flames. As you were saying earlier, I think reporting cathedral authorities saying that the, all the wood panelling and all the wood decoration inside are now very much on fire and they fear that, that none of that can be saved and you can see the flames rising up from the heart of that building are silhouetting the frame, the stone frame, at least one of those rose windows, the, the, the world famous stained glass rose windows of the Notre Dame Cathedral. The, the one on the front, um, I can say from earlier at least, was undamaged but we don't know what state the others are but we can certainly say that one. Uh, has been uh, melted or completely uh, destroyed. I can say what the Notre Dame Cathedral means to me uh, and will mean to millions of people. Well, let's talk to a Parisian. I'll take my microphone off and try and talk to... Talk to what's your name? My name is Remy. Remy. So you were saying earlier you're Parisian, you've lived here all your life. Mm. Just tell us what this cathedral means to you. Well, it's at the heart of the city, obviously, to us Parisians, but also to all the tourists that visit us every year. And it's quite striking here to see all the Parisians that come here to gather to mourn building. It's the first time I would I would have never expect actually to watch people being so silent and being so peaceful just watching this cathedral burning down. Because the mood is it, it's one of subdued shock, sadness. It is it is silent. People are just looking on in horror, aren't they? It is extremely sad. The fact that us we everybody is very silent here and the fact that we all gathered here spontaneously shows that how this building is not just a building, it's a whole part of our history that we're losing today. And we just hope now that the, uh, the fire won't damage any more buildings because as we can see, the fire is still going on. The tower seems to be fine though they're being um, um, drawn in water so they couldn't cool down. Um, but we truly hope that everything would be uh, much better in a few hours and obviously all the Parisians and all the French people are supporting the firemen here so they can um, turn, well, extinguish the fire as so quickly as Encouraging possible. them on. Just tell us what, what went through your mind when you first saw what was happening here. Well, I, I was quite shocked really, because I, I saw on Twitter something like a, like a fire happen, which can normally happen, but when I saw uh, the whole wooden structure of the whole rooftop that actually burned down, I thought, oh my God, this is really happening. And when the arrow started being on fire and suddenly collapsed, and we all heard this awful sound, meaning that the arrow, the arrow was down, it meant that yeah. this was ne the whole hand of Nira, yeah. Remy, thank you very much. I think speaking, uh, conveying the emotions of hundreds of people here on the northern bank of the Seine, as they've described what they've been seeing oh, here, that spire, as <laughs> it fell into Paris. the fires, was the emotional low point. I think people just uh, crying out and gasping with shock, uh, and as he was saying there, still trying to come to terms with what is still going on over there. The, the, the building is very much burning, and, and whatever the efforts of the fire service, they still very much do not have it under control. OK, Dominic, thanks very much indeed for the update. Uh, Dominic Wycombe on live for us there in Paris. That's uh, the live shot. Uh, not under control because you can still see the, the flames there burning in the heart of the cathedral itself. And there's reports from Dominic that one of those towers uh, may be being uh, affected by flames. Uh, certainly can't see them from there, but uh, could well be affecting them at the base of those towers. Well, uh, somebody else uh, I know watching in horror will be Dr. Jennifer Alexander, a cathedral's expert at the University of Warwick, who joins me now. Uh, good to talk to you, Dr. Alexander. Thank you very much indeed. As you, you witness these scenes, presumably this is a, a cathedral that you know very well indeed. Well, yes, it's one of the major buildings of Gothic Europe. It's, uh, it's a fabulous building, and this is just a nightmare. It certainly is. Let's, let's talk through um, some 
of the treasures, some of the damage that, that we've seen for ourselves. Now, we saw the, 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 the spire fall. And did mm. it have, um, on the top of it, as we saw it, saw it go into the flames, does it have a, a French cockerel or, or on the top of it? I imagine so. This is, this is a piece of 19th century work. It's by the great 19th century restorer of, of Notre Dame, um, Eugène Viollet-le-Duc. And he was very precise about it. He found the medieval thin timber spire from the middle of the building, and he recreated it in wood. A lot of people thought it was iron, but in fact it was wood. And I'm afraid you could see that as it burned. It collapsed down on, on, on top of itself. It was lead covering timber, and then it just went in the middle of the roof. So awful. Yeah. What about... Um inside the cathedral so that the roof and a, a lot of wood has collapsed into one would imagine the, the the floor of the cathedral in parts itself what what is in there what are some of the treasures that may be being being burnt maybe disappearing well actually it's not what's inside the building it's a, a quite in the same way as you're thinking. Uh, with any luck, the stone vault will protect most of the building. What's in greatest danger is the stained glass, because what's happening is that it's being exposed to extreme heat with the fire, and then the fireman's hoses are cooling it down very quickly. And this was a problem we had in York all way back 30 years ago in 1984, where the stained glass suffered really badly because of the, um, the thermal shock of being very hot and then being cooled down quickly. That's what yeah. I'm most worried about, the medieval glass. Absolutely. Well, you're referring to that awful fire in York Minster. Um, mm -hmm. That, of course, though, has been restored. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, visitors to York now would have no idea that anything devastating happened. They might look up and see some of the ceiling uh, carvings look pretty new. That's the, um, the, the, the way that they recovered from it. They did a nice job on it. Um, let's hope that they can do something equally good here. But they've just lost the entire roof from end to end. It's absolutely extraordinary. They obviously weren't expecting anything like this to happen. I mean, at York Minster, the way, it ha the, way the roof's been rebuilt, it could never happen again. The way it went through, through Paris so quickly in the roof suggests they didn't have any, precau any precautionary measures up there at all. They just we didn't expect it. We understand it's... Uh tons of wood and tons of lead absolutely yes and it's all tinder dry um so once fire gets hold it goes very quickly and um this is every cathedral's nightmare and has been since the middle ages we've, we've got eyewitness accounts from the middle ages of people suddenly seeing a, the roof of canterbury cathedral on fire um way back in the 12th century um and there are lots of other stories as well of people fleeing in terror as burning lead rains down from the building uh, scorching people. I mean, fortunately, there, there don't seem to have been any casualties for this one, which is really terrific. Yeah, that's what we understand. That, that is mm. what we understand in, ter in terms of casualties, uh, Dr. Alexander. But, I mean, is there then some... I mean, you know, given how long these buildings stand for, hundreds indeed, mm. up to a thousand years and more, I mean, is it almost part of their, their story, part of their history, that they will be affected at times by awful events like this? Indeed, yes. I mean, in, in France, in northern France, the great cathedral at Reims was bombarded during the First World War, and that had a similar situation to this, where the entire roof went. And um, in their case, there was a wooden scaffolding that acted like a chimney around the outside. The good news here is that although they had a scaffolding up on the building. It was a completely metal one, so it didn't add to the flames. Mm. And yes, it is... I, I'm sorry, sorry oh, to buck in. Please, please oh, continue. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, Reims Cathedral was a, an absolute disaster because it was being used as a field hospital during the First World War when this happened. And um, again, they managed to save the building. It was a stone vault, so the flames didn't actually get inside the building. I haven't yet found out with this one whether the flames have got inside. Um, that's when you get the big problems. Uh, Coventry Cathedral during the Second World War, that was destroyed by fire bombs because it didn't have a stone vault. And once the fire really got hold, the burning timbers brought down the building. 
Um, here we've got a stone vault in Paris, so this gives the building a lot of protection. But the point about roofs is that they're not just there to keep the weather out. The structure of the roof actually holds the top of the building together, and so the building is very vulnerable without its roof. So they're going to have to get the engineers in very quickly, as soon as it's possible to see, um, to assess the damage and what they've got to do to safeguard the building. My good.
les bornes incendies là. Les... The burn is there. Uh, strong animal. in the steeple.
Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
This is an NBC News special report. 
Here's Lester Holt. Good afternoon from New York. We're coming back on the air with the breaking news out of Paris where an inferno is burning at the famed Notre Dame Cathedral, one of France's most popular tourist destinations. Firefighters are on the scene where the 850-year-old cathedral has been burning for hours now. Dramatic video capturing the moment when one of the spires collapsed in flames. A groan from those watching below. Reports also say the roof has collapsed. Notre Dame has been under a nearly $7 million renovation, and initially we saw a lot of flames surrounding the scaffolding. I want to bring in now uh, Sarah Harmon of, our, uh, of NBC News and our London Bureau, who has the very latest. Sarah? Lester, this is a historic day. We are going into the fourth hour of a massive blaze at Notre Dame Cathedral just minutes ago. A official from the French Interior Ministry saying firefighters may not be able to save Notre Dame Cathedral. Earlier, the Paris Fire Department said the next hour and a half are going to be absolutely crucial. Lester, this is a building that's 850 years old, by some accounts even older. It survived revolutions, world wars, and tonight, there are fears this could be the end. French President Emmanuel Macron is on the scene. He is treating this as a national emergency. 400 firefighters are battling the blaze. And France's civil security agency says all means necessary will be used except dropping water via aircraft. There are fears that measure could damage the structure and actually cause it to collapse. Now, quite remarkably, so far, we have no reports of fatalities in this massive blaze. It's pretty incredible when you think about a fire that's been burning now, going into the fourth hour in an urban, heavily populated area. It's still burning, and this is an active situation, Lester. All right, Sarah, just absolutely agonizing to watch this effort to save, literally to save this cathedral. I want to go to Paris now. Annalise Borges of our partner Euro News is on the scene. Annalise, what can you tell us about this fight to save Notre Dame? Well, this uh, is an ongoing fight. Uh, that fire was declared uh, shortly before 7 p.m. local time, about some three hours ago. And as we speak, firefighters continue to try and fight the flames, but their efforts seem absolutely powerless in the face of the magnitude of this fire. In less than two hours, the monument that, as Sarah said, survived everything. Nazis couldn't destroy the Notre Dame. Uh, the monument was engulfed by flames uh, that ra ravaged the roof and that continues now to uh, wage inside. Uh, this of course, it's a very painful night for Paris, a very painful night for those watching. There are thousands of people in the streets of Paris as we speak, and they have been standing uh, idle and in shock watching the Notre Dame being engulfed by fire. This object of literary masterpieces, a symbol of France, we're literally witnessing history going up in flames tonight. All right, Annalise, thank you for that report from the streets of Paris, where we continue to watch this monumental effort Firefighters just pouring water uh, from their tower ladders that have surrounded this structure. The framework of the scaffolding from the construction there, uh, plainly visible, but the flames now coming through where the roof was. It's hard to know exactly what kind of fuel this fire is getting, what's inside that is uh, uh, feeding the intensity of these flames. But this is a, a, a difficult, as, as Annalise pointed out, a difficult urban firefighting effort that we are witnessing right now to one of the most iconic symbols of Europe. Um, I'm joined now in the studio by NBC's Ann Thompson, who's been watching along with me as well. These pictures are just unbelievable, Lester. And the Archbishop of Paris says the roof, the frame, and the spire of the cathedral are now consumed. Inside, there is much wood, and that is believed to have fueled this fire. He is inviting priests throughout Paris to ring the bells in their church to ask people to come and pray for the, the remainder of this cathedral. We have word this afternoon from the Vatican. Alessandro Giussotti, who is the papal spokesperson, said that the Holy See, in other words, Pope Francis, expresses shock and sadness over this fire. They are praying for the people of Paris and especially for the firefighters who are trying to put out the fire and they ensure 
Um, the Vatican wants the people of Paris to know that they are feeling very close and they are watching them and that they are in their prayers. But this is a very, very important structure, not just to the cultural life of Paris, but certainly to the spiritual life. And on this Holy Week, the holiest week in the Catholic Church, when Catholics and Christians around the world remember the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, this is just an un believable sight. And this uh, fire broke out a little before 7 local time, 7 in the evening, and that would have been about the time, I think 6.40 is when they uh, were scheduled to close their doors to tourists. So it would be uh, during that transition from allowing tourists to come in, and then uh, we understand a later mass. So that may account for the fact that uh, we have not heard any reports of, of injuries or casualties here, that it was at a period uh, a place obviously uh, visited by thousands each day. Uh, it was a period that uh, tourists would have been leaving, if not all gone, from that structure at the time. We don't know what the timetable was on the construction. As we noted a bit earlier, uh, the prosecutor's office in Paris has opened an official investigation into the cause right now. But it is these pictures, what is happening right now, the here and now, that is causing such pain and heartbreak from along the river Seine to across the world, people watching this on their TVs of a place that, whether you visit it or not, um, it is indeed one of the most iconic structures in the world, and certainly across Europe, and, and a place that uh, is, is number one or number two on the list of visitors to Paris. There, as the camera moves in, you can see firefighters there uh, working alongside uh, uh, with the tower ladder, uh, pouring water into the center of the cathedral trying to get a handle on this but as we have been noting we are now watching a desperate battle to save Notre Dame. Um, much of the structure has gone now. The uh, roof, uh, the uh, much of the interior, you see the front part standing, you see the very uh, rear standing but uh, the interior appears to be destroyed or nearly destroyed and that uh, red glow can be seen from many many parts of Paris tonight as those flames and embers continue to uh, continue to burn. It, it is a, uh, as night falls, it is truly a eerie, eerie sight. Um, there is, if there is one piece of good news tonight, Lester, is there are reports, there are relics in um, uh, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. And one of those relics is a thorn from what's believed to be the crown of thorns that Christ wore when he was crucified. And there are reports that that has been recovered. And certainly if there is a little bit of hope, something to build on as Paris and the church goes forward, it would be that report. All right, Anne, thank you very much. We're going to be coming back on the air in about uh, two and a half hours for NBC Nightly News. We will update this fight to save uh, Notre Dame. Um, when we come on the air, our Richard Engel will be reporting live from Paris. And, of course, you can stay on top of this uh, as we go along throughout the day on the NBC News app. For now, I'm Lester Holt, NBC News, New York. Good day.
Kasić su još uvijek na terenu, sve više i više ih prilazi. Bore se sa vatrom koja je izbila ovdje oko 6 sati godine, no buktinja još uvijek nije ugašena, kao što mi smo bili kod smjenice.
de l'ange de l'autre côté. This, this is, is the, the primary audio, audio circuit, circuit for the Reuters. Reuters.
Sur le, sur le pont avant oui, euh, le euh, Après, c'est difficile parce que la police est interdite. Elle est vraiment en face.
de
看这边，那个这几天多，就是三层楼的话，你看就是那个，哦，三四五五层楼，大概是，它它它是多层楼，是吧？Je ne touche pas, monsieur, il n'y a pas de souci. Ni il crache, monsieur, ni il crache. Oui. Je ne suis pas un boulet, ni il crache, je fais comme tout le monde des photos. Oui. Ni il crache, monsieur, ni je fais tout le monde. Il n'y a pas de souci, monsieur, je gère. Je gère. Voilà.
andar em tudo essa parada bizarra de cair.
Jojo.
Bonsoir à tous et merci d'être là. Notre-Dame brûle et la France entière pleure et le monde entier aussi. Et c'est une émotion extrême. Je reçois des messages du monde entier, de tout le monde. Tout le monde est véritablement bouleversé. Bien sûr, nous sommes nous-mêmes complètement chaos. Le premier message que j'ai reçu, par exemple, c'est celui du grand rabbin de France, Aïm Corsia, qui m'a dit « C'est notre lieu à tous et je pleure avec toi ». Voilà, je voulais remercier aussi les pompiers qui ont pu sauver les deux tours. Ils risquent leur vie à chaque fois. On peut les remercier vraiment parce qu'ils ont la courage inouïe et d'un professionnalisme extraordinaire. Je remercie bien sûr Monsieur le Président d'être venu, Madame la Maire d'être venue et tous de mettre en œuvre tout leur savoir-faire. Aujourd'hui, Paris est en prière tout entier. Toutes les églises se sont ouvertes. Toutes les églises sont en train de prier. Il y a une centaine de jeunes à la fontaine Saint-Michel qui sont en train de prier. Donc tous ensemble, nous sommes unis, unis dans ce grand malheur qui nous touche et qui, au-delà de la France, touche le monde entier. Merci vraiment à vous tous. Ce qui s'est passé ce soir à Paris et dans cette cathédrale Notre-Dame est évidemment... Un terrible drame. Je veux avant toute chose avoir une pensée et des remerciements pour les sapeurs-pompiers de Paris. Près de 500 d'entre eux, depuis plusieurs heures, se sont battus contre les flammes et se battent encore. Et le feront euh, encore pendant des heures et des, et des heures et sans doute plusieurs jours. Ils l'ont fait avec un courage extrême, un grand professionnalisme et beaucoup de détermination de la part de leur chef. Je veux ici leur dire les remerciements de la nation tout entière. Durant ces heures, grâce à leur engagement, à l'engagement de l'ensemble des services de l'État, de la mairie de Paris, des personnels de Notre-Dame, le pire a été évité, même si la bataille n'est pas encore totalement gagnée. Les prochaines heures seront difficiles. Mais grâce à leur courage, la façade et les deux tours principales ne se sont pas effondrées. Alors je veux ce soir avoir bien entendu avant tout une pensée pour les catholiques. Les catholiques de France et partout à travers le monde. En particulier en cette semaine sainte. Je sais ce qu'ils ressentent. Et nous sommes avec eux. Je veux aussi avoir une pensée pour toutes les parisiennes et les parisiens. Notre-Dame de Paris, c'est leur cathédrale et plus encore. Madame le maire de Paris était avec nous toutes ces heures. Dès les premières flammes, 
je sais son émotion et celle des habitants de la ville. Et je veux aussi avoir une pensée pour l'ensemble de nos compatriotes. Parce que Notre-Dame de Paris, c'est notre histoire, notre littérature, notre imaginaire, le lieu où nous avons vécu tous nos grands moments, nos épidémies, nos guerres, nos libérations. C'est l'épicentre de notre vie. C'est les talons d'où partent les distances et d'où l'on se mesure depuis Paris. C'est tant de livres, de peintures. C'est une cathédrale qui est celle de toutes les Françaises et de tous les Français, même celles et ceux qui n'y sont jamais venus. Cette histoire, c'est la nôtre. Alors elle brûle. Elle brûle et je sais cette tristesse, ce tremblement intérieur ressenti par tant de nos concitoyens. Et ce soir, je veux aussi avoir un mot d'espérance pour nous tous et toutes. Cette espérance, c'est la fierté que nous devons avoir. Fierté de tous ceux qui se sont battus pour que le pire n'advienne pas. Ces soldats du feu, fierté, parce que cette cathédrale, il y a plus de 800 ans, nous avons su l'édifier. Et à travers les siècles, la faire grandir et l'améliorer. Alors je vous le dis très solennellement ce soir, cette cathédrale, nous la rebâtirons. Tous ensemble. Et c'est sans doute une part du destin français. Et le projet que nous aurons pour les années à venir. Mais je m'y engage. Dès demain, une souscription nationale sera lancée. Et bien au-delà de nos frontières. Nous ferons appel aux plus grands talents. Et ils sont nombreux qui viendront y contribuer. Et nous rebâtirons. Nous rebâtirons Notre-Dame. Parce que c'est ce que les Français attendent. Parce que c'est ce que notre histoire mérite. Parce que c'est notre destin profond. Je vous remercie.
Il faut appuyer une fois sur le bouton blanc okay. pour faire ce défi et là c'est ça le défi. Okay. 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 Thank you. 
Só que aí o que acontece? Eu te queria fazer o antes e depois, e eu tinha um plano assim que eu não conseguia, eu não tinha feito no mesmo ano. Né? Aí eu passei por uma semana, eu não sei o que eu faço. Eu tentei fazer, eu não tinha falado, pós-produção, botar ela de novo, sabe assim? Ela existe, só que eu não filmei no mesmo ano, eu fiz o plano de 2016, e ia botar só acho que é lá. Ela falou, vão achar que você frustrou o negócio de falso. Só uma semana. Já tinha, tinha que ter terminado já a edição, eu ia fazer sozinho, cara. Eu liguei para amigo meu, um dia, e pai, ele foi, ele ia sair para filmar para mim. Mas para mim, o ando mais uma assim e tal. Tá. Acho que o telefone, que merda. Choveu, tipo, choveu, tu não tem esse ano. Não era para ser. Chegar aqui do lado.
respirando, o sea, cerca no está. O sea, cerca ellos no están del todo, ¿sabes? Los andenes siguen ahí. ¿Es eso que está así? Detrás del triángulo. Detrás, detrás que como una luz. Hay luces rojas. Yo lo hago un montón. Esos son andamios. Esos son andamios. Que de hecho, hostias, que no es más ruda. Que de hecho, hostias, que no es más ruda. Que de hecho, hostias, que no es más ruda. Que de hecho, hostias, que no es más ruda. Ya se hago así, para hacer el yo pensaba que no se veía porque llevaba solo. No, que estoy dando amistad, no. Es como el fin de la vida. Entre las torres para probar la. Mira, están subidos esa niña. Están buscando. Hostia, tú que cabrones han subido ya. Mira, mira, mira. Tú, pues hay mazo de gente, eh. Sí, sí. Un árbol así. Que sale un zombie y este recién de Bilón. Sale un zombie de los 15.
Là, la batterie euh, externe s'est épuisée, donc maintenant tu es à 85% sur la live view. Donc, euh, je pense que tu euh, auras plus de. Bon, bah, je t'attends. Ok, en plus, il y a.
Ja. Però... No sé, la ben lligada. El que passa és que ha sigut molt, molt mala resolució. Has de jugar amb la... És que tu vas derrere el trau de l'hivern. Pitjor, com més clar és pitjor, eh? Sí, quan la pots a la... No, a través de l'altre, el fòssil. Per mi és pitjor de resolució. Per mi és més maca així. Però així no, així. La lumière que eux font ou c'est la lumière de ah, les gens ouais, qui sont les gens qui sont les gens qui Mais là, on distingue un petit moyen. Oui, en même temps, c'est un peu plus lent. Alors, je me dis que c'est bien à, à ma caméra.
Ah, moi, je suis en train de dire notre dame de Paris. J'ai vu la flèche sur vous. Heureusement, j'ai pas vu ça. Je suis en plein de bloquer, mais même c'est hyper. Il a fait tellement vivre pour le jeu, c'est tout à fait vrai que ça m'a. Si je peux pas rester là, c'est un peu plus facile. Il y a une occasion de la vie 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 de la vie